Hey everybody, welcome to MVM Live. It is Sunday night. Uh, we are, I'm moderately still jet lagged from Essen. I'm like waking up at 4 or 5 a.m. every day still. So. I know, my, my sleep schedule is so off and uh, I think that's just from going overseas and being, a, you know, having a six hour time difference between the two. And it was my first. You know what? What? You didn't put your mic on. I've got my mic you on. Do? Well, I do. I can't hear you. I can't hear me. Maybe. Oh no, it's good. There was a delay. It's uh, me that doesn't have my mic on yet. Oh boy. All right. Yeah. So anyway, uh, this is my first Essence spiel, and it's, um, the jet lag. it's the jet lag for you <laughs> for sure. Uh, and it was quite the show. Like I was not prepared for how large the show is. Um, it's immense. Like walking, we walked ninety-seven thousand steps, or about forty-five miles. Yeah. It was crazy. For, what, five days straight. Yeah. So tonight what we're going to do is we're going to show you uh, the immense amount of games that we either got prior to the show, which we did on our SN live stream, or that we uh, snuck back in our hard shell suitcases, uh, ninja style. Um, snuck back with the giant well, we, suitcases. <laughs> sure. It's, uh, yeah, it was quite the haul back. But off to our sides, we have about over 50 games. Oh, yeah. And we're going to try to do it in 10 minutes. Um, I'm just kidding. There's... <laughs> Maybe maybe like an hour and a half. So I we're going to go through each of these games, maybe open some of them, maybe not open some of them, and kind of show them off, uh, give you our, our honest impressions about what we think about the game, whether we think it's going to stay in our collection, whether it's our type of game after playing it. Uh, we've even played it yet. If we've played it yet. So uh, Let's you get the else? easy one out of the way. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Let's get Because we've been talking about this one, and it definitely released at the show. All right. So, Marvel Champions. Yeah, so Marvel Champions is out. Came out on November 1st. There was a launch event, which has some really cool cards. If you guys um, have you a chance to, to go to in your, yeah, switch the overhead cam. If you guys have a chance to go to your local retailers, there are these cards, which are awesome. They're alternate art cards for all the five basic heroes in the game. They have the uh, hero right on one side, and they have the, um, the yeah. alter ego on the other side. And they look like comic books. They're yeah, so they, cool. it's the same art, but it is uh, different graphic design, which is wonderful because it does look just like the comics. Yeah, they are super awesome. But anyway, this game is going to be huge. Uh, as it stands right now, this is probably my favorite game of the year. Um, I was a big Lord of the Rings player for a long time. I still um, buy them, but I don't play the game as often because Lord of the Rings is really hard to follow because there's all these really obscure heroes. Um, you can't really follow all of them all the time. And this is Marvel, and we know all the heroes, so anyway. Yeah. Let's go to this one next, because I know a lot of people were curious about this. Yeah, so this is the new Castles of it's Burgundy. A beautiful box. It is a pretty box. Um, my Ooh. first impressions of this game are that uh, the board actually looks a lot better than what I originally thought it was going to look. A lot of people were upset about the way the board looked, and maybe it was a little bit too colorful. And I honestly think it looks pretty good so far. I'm I, I'm liking the way it looks. And honestly, I, we haven't played it, but it's Castles of Burgundy. Like we've played this game dozens and dozens of times before. It's got a ton of different mats in here. Uh, some of them are single ones. Some of them link together to form one giant uh, foundation. I don't think I have any of those up right now. But anyway, um, I like the graphic design. I think I, I mean I'm fine with it, and I'm glad that I got it. Uh, have you you've not played Castles of Burgundy no, before, have you? I haven't. That's sad. I feel, I feel sad for you that you haven't played this well, game. Well, we should definitely play it then, because it's not one that really struck me. I don't know. One I needed to get on the table soon. I don't know if the price was worth it. I think it was like 45 or 50 euros. It was quite expensive for the game. Um, but it, again, it just depends on your love of, of this style game. This is, in my opinion, Stefan Feld's uh, masterpiece. masterpiece. It's his best game by far. So anyway, New Castles of Bird. Yes. You want to uh, on, I do want to play it because I feel like it's one I just need to have checked off the list more than anything else. Well, it's like a top 20 game of all time, yes. so you absolutely well, have to play it. Oh, uh, not sad, Kira. <laughs> There's enough awesome games. Somebody was asking what dividers you were using for Marvel. Were you using anything specific? I'm using cut up pieces of cardboard. There you go. I'm going to need to make this something on my cricket. <laughs> uh, there has to be something. I don't know why they didn't deliver with those, but uh, yeah, I, I'm going to run out of room because all my slots are already full with heroes and villains. And 
Uh, I love the game so much that I bought three sets. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, here's yeah. another one people are uh, excited yes. about. This, this is just the box. Yes. Of course, because, and I'll put this in front of me since I'm not on camera and you're, okay. this is what people are So, seeing. yes, that is the box, and this is the box with everything in it. So, this has all of the original Underwater Cities, plus all the expansions. I have some stuff from um, Board Game Geek. Uh, these are their awesome little tokens. So this game comes with a, uh, a bunch of new stuff. Number one, it comes with new cards for all three of the different eras. Um, but the big draw is, I'm gonna actually pull these out because people are gonna love on this. And you know what, following all the social media after uh, Spiel, not a pe enough people are talking about how cool this is. Well, this is one of the things. You're gonna now have uh, underwater um, museum that you can actually uh, try to unlock some special things with on this board. Oh, that's cool. However, this is the cool thing. Is the overhead camera on for this it one? It is. All right. So these are, as you can see, pre-cut uh, boards. And these are thick, thick player boards, unlike the ones that came with the original game. Shiny, too. Yeah, they actually fit all the domes. They'll fit the tunnels. They'll fit all the different resources around the outside. There are eight of these because they come in, uh, maybe there's more than eight. I know there's eight of them because there's four different ways now, or three different ways to play the game. So there's four, there's three sets of four, basically, if you can do the math there, because they're double-sided. Uh, one of the sides will have to be used for the museum expansion, one of them will have to be used for the advanced side of the game, and one of them is gonna have to be used for the normal side of the game. So you have a whole bunch of new boards now for the game. I'm super impressed, and I'm hoping, like I made a, a BGG thread a while ago about my uh, disdain for the kelp strategy in the game, which I've always mm -hmm. found to be really, really powerful, and I'm hoping that the game has kind of solved that. I think one of the things that the game did is they now offer your, um, you have these cards at the start, the assistants, that are now um, not according to colors. You could draft these if you want, and all the assistants are very, very different than the original ones. All give you powers, allow you to skip the very first uh, round of the game because you're using those particular ones. So super intrigued by Underwater Cities, I have yet to play it. Uh, but I'm so glad that I brought it home just for the player boards themselves. Well, now it's your turn to pick something from your side. You like this game, don't you? I love that game. Yeah. I, we stopped playing it because you kind of broke it. I don't know if I broke it, but I definitely... You broke it with the kelp thing, and that made it sad. All right, so I got a whole bunch of little stuff here, and I'll bring out a couple of them. This is Haga Kure. Oh, yeah, this um, is a little cool trick-taking game. This is not out yet. This one comes out in March. It is from Studio H, uh, who brought us the wonderful game Alubari, which we'll show you mm -hmm. in a moment. Uh, this is an upcoming game from them. Uh, so we have a prototype here, but the one thing I want to show you is how pretty these cards are. And they're all tarot-sized cards, but they got some really cool Japanese-inspired art on here. Very anime-ish. Um, and this is just a prototype, but it is gorgeous. Yeah. And what I really enjoyed about the explanation that we got, we have not had a chance to play it yet, but are these samurai, which you see are the different colored cards. Can mm -hmm. you put some of those yeah. out for people to see? So if the, the way this trick-taking game works, it works like you would think from how we understood it, but then you mm -hmm. have these samurai, and when somebody plays a samurai, you have to play a samurai, so it becomes, but then there's these three old samurai, and there's special rules for them, and mm -hmm. all kinds of interesting stuff. So it's one, just quite beautiful. It's a nice little light trick-taking game coming from, I mean, with Alubari mm -hmm. on the other side of it. It's kind of crazy to think about, but they had a couple of cute looking games. We didn't get to bring it with us, but uh, Fish and Chips, which is a little dexterity yeah. game, looks super cute, yeah. and they had a new one from uh, Antoine Bauza and um, Ludovic, uh, not Ludovic Mablanc, it was, um, uh, who's the artist I'm thinking of? He's one of your favorites. Yeah. Uh, Dutre. Yeah. Dutre. Anyway, that one's also coming out in March, and the name escapes me. Uh, Ultry. Ultry yeah, is the Yeah, Ultry, yep. And then we have also one more from them, though. Uh, sure. Oriflom. I'll bring Might that well one out. Might as well just knock it out. All right, so this is Oriflom. It is a three- to five player game. Again, mm -hmm. another trick taking game. Uh, it has a lot of similarities to the look and uh, universe of Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. Especially with the cards, but it's a trick taking game. We haven't played it. I know that Ella. Well, um, it's not really a trick taking game. It's more it, like it reminded me of Koo when he explained it to me. Okay. Like you're, you're looking at the different factions, right? And they all have different abilities, like the assassination and the archer. I mean, I could be wrong. 
And they're all color coding. Both. They're all color coded to a particular family. Turn those over because those are and really then, cool too. Yeah. Then you're going to have, so you have the different coats of arms and you're going to have only so many everybody has set what seven cards to play uh, with in a game I don't know how or many. something like that Two. and then you're going to mix ten. up 10 yeah you're going to remove player. 3 and keep seven so you're yep. not going to be sure which 3 didn't get into play so everybody has the same set of 10 mm -hmm. but which seven are they playing with so very beautiful uh, all over. Doesn't that look like Game of Thrones, though? It does. It, I think exactly I don't think like there's Game of Thrones. anything wrong with that, personally. Uh, well, no. You put that away since you made this. I will. I will. Yeah, this is the other problem with doing this, is that we got to put all this stuff back away. Sure, we're sure. Done. Otherwise, we're going to have a giant pile of stuff. I get to go home. All right, so I've got one silver here. I think David, David has, has the, the other, other one. one. Uh, mm -hmm. We actually just played this the other day. We've had a prototype of this for quite some time. Uh, to be fair, this isn't my style of game, but it's super fun because it, it is super cute. Yeah, what you're doing is you're laying a bunch of cards face down in front of you, um, and you're allowed to look at two of those cards, and through deduction and drawing cards, you're trying to get the lowest numbers on your table uh, or in front of you by the time a player triggers the end of the round, and the cards are either going to be face down or face up. If they're face up, they're going to trigger some kind of ability. If they're face down, they're just going to sit there with their value. But you have to find mm -hmm. ways to figure out what they are. Uh, and the two different sets are completely mergeable. So you can have all the cards from one set and then intermix them with cards from the other set. Right. Which is super cool. Yes, very cute. Bezier. And the little bullet is also super cool. <laughs> the bullet. The bullet that it comes with. Ooh, how about this one? What you got? Terra Mara. We've definitely talked about this already, so we don't need to break it all the way out. No, well. we don't. We have a video on this one already. We did a preview of this one. Um, uh, it was actually a first look uh, several months ago. This is from the same designers that did a lot of the games like Grand Austria Hotel, Coimbra. Uh, a fantastic group of Italian designers. Mm -hmm. um, it is a really, really good worker placement game that has a unique twist in the fact that the tiles uh, that make up the game board, which you can kind of see right here, mm -hmm. are going to be able to be flipped every round. And where you place your guy on this row will either allow them to come back to you to be able to use it again, or they'll stay there. But all the ones down lower give you more resources and more abilities with your turn. I love the game, so I had to oh, pick up the final copy. Totally loved it. And just real quick, hi. I know we've got some highs in the comments, so not so, sorry we're not saying hi to everybody. Uh, I've got the computer a little bit far away from me at the moment, but uh, Nerfenstein, girly Nerfenstein. gamer, Jeremy Howard. We had a lot of friends in the chat, so thanks everybody for tuning in, and we'll, I'm doing my best to catch your comments and questions as we go. Um, yeah, so yes, Terramar is. This, this is a big game. This is a big Euro game. It's two to four players. Takes about two hours to play through. You can probably get a two uh, two player game done and. 60 minutes to 75 minutes. It's fairly fast. So that's Terramara. I love the game. about this little thing that's sitting uh, on the Yeah, I, I can. So as we were walking around at the show, we saw uh, Scott from BGG no. and Rodney walking yeah. around with these um, puzzle boxes. And it's called Clue Box, and it's from a company that's owned by Asmodee, like everyone, called ID Venture. <laughs> and uh, what it is, it's a it's a puzzle box that I you're trying to... they were Asmodee. Are you sure they're not they were, distributed well, by Asmodee? I mean, distributed by yeah. Asmodee, like everyone. And anyway, it's a puzzle box, and you're trying to break your way into here. And through a variety of different actions and turning of the wheels and pulling levers out, you can see here, uh, keys were in the bottom of this. I was able to find how to get the keys out. These keys will go in different locations, which can turn and open up more mechanisms. And there's all these symbols on yeah. these little dials here. And my yep. husband is, we've got one at home too, and my husband's already started tearing into his. And you're trying to get Schrodinger's cat out. Yeah. That's the whole point. There's something, you I mean, you can... It's can the cat. Hear, you can hear. a cat in there. We yeah. have to save it. So this is super cool. And it was pretty cheap. It was like 27 euros. Yeah, Rodney said it was like an escape in. It's a puzzle box. It's a puzzle box. It's but I love it. Box. I mean, it, 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 is, it is neat. You have to figure out all the keys. And there are a lot of keys and a lot of symbols. I wish you guys could really see it, but there's symbols on each one of these little notches. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I figured out what they are, but I'm and missing two oh, of them. Yeah. Here's, this is obviously a code. Levers. You're going to put these at different spots to do something for sure. Mm -hmm. Cute. It's like Hellraiser. Have you ever watched Hellraiser? Yes. You know, the little box that yes. he has? Yeah, I hope a demon doesn't fly out with this thing. Oh, no. Anyway, that is that. What else we got? Here, I'm... Oh, I'm channeling Cosima today. I love that. That is... You're doing what? Massive compliment. Thank you. 
for that. Casima from Orphan Black, the show I keep telling you you should watch. So this is uh, the original Heaven and Hell, which is It's new. called the Clue Box, by the way, what we just put away. Yes, the Clue Box. Um, and hopefully we'll go back and timestamp all this stuff. So we'll put names so you can figure out what's what. It's going to be a lot to timestamp, but I, <laughs> I'm sure you'll do that this time. Uh oh, yeah. Uh. Okay. So <laughs> this, is, this is Heaven and Ale. This game has been out for quite some time. This is the expansion. And, um, oh, can I talk this, about the box? Y yeah, go for it. <laughs> this box was the most pointless box of ever, uh, boxes ever to be made. Yeah. There was like a Scoot what? this thing up. A tiny yeah. bit. Show them what came with I it. I don't even, it's on the back of the box. Oh yeah, so it was a couple of boards, some chits, some cards, and some tokens. And a little wagon, a little, little wagons. It uh, could have fit in a, 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 a baggie and something about this thin. Yeah, these little wagons that you see right here. And yet Jeremy still cool. figured out how to make it home with the box. Yeah, so uh, we spent several nights doing the whole breakdown and punching of, of chit and cardboard. And when we started packing the boxes, we literally had no room. And this is one of the boxes that was going to get destroyed. And unlike most heathens that would throw uh, an expansion box away, I could not find it in my heart to do so. <laughs> so I ended up throwing away um, some boxers and a t-shirt and some pairs of socks so I could fit this in uh, my suitcase. Well, you so could have just put them in the box. I am now the glad owner of uh, an empty box. A giant, unnecessary no empty box. But, but I keep the them. expansion looks great. Yeah, that expansion does look cool. And Heaven and Nail is good. You, you played Heaven and Nail? That's another one I haven't played. Oh my gosh, girl. We know it. All um, right. What you got? I don't even know. This is from Spielworks, Throne of Allegoria. Yeah, so... Looks cool. Um, the designer, Robin, um, uh, suggested this game for us. And on the table, this looks incredibly heavy. It's, very, it's a very empty box. But mm -hmm. however, these uh, player boards are really, really cool. Of course, um, they're punched boards, so you can fit all your little tokens down in them. Honestly, I don't know a whole lot about mm -hmm. the game, but the rule book, like any good Spielworks, is a massive rule book. You're looking at, I don't know, pages. 20, 20 pages of really small text. And these lovely player aids, which are double sided in English and in German. Yeah, this, which is, are nice. this is a very dense rule book, but that doesn't uh, make me shy away from it in any way. I oh, love no. these type of games. I love heavier Euro games. So I'm excited to try this. Uh, honestly, I didn't know uh, really anything about the game. Uh, and I'm glad that he uh, sent it our yeah, way. Yeah, sent it our way. So that is Throne of Allegoria. Well, you've got a much bigger pout. Let's get through some of these little things. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to put all these on the table. Uh, let's talk about these two because yes. they're from the same publisher along with one other game, which is so down there somewhere. We we have played Orb Hunters. We haven't had a chance to play Ramen yet, though. I'm excited because I love ramen so much. I do. Mm. I do. And in the art, in this little game about ramen is so good. It makes me want to play it even more. And then also eat ramen. You got these Do you ones. even know what type of game it is? I don't. I don't either. My guess is that I'm making ramen. That's Because these are all the ingredients. Of ramen. Of ramen. I, th I think you got the point across. What's that? Does that, is that just sauce? Show you. It's, you can have tengatsu, you can have shoyu ramen, you have all kinds of different ramen, Jeremy. Jeremy does not eat I eat I eat ramen in, he eats, uh, in like, college. The but... kind that, that you the top ramen. That's Jeremy's ramen. This is all in Spanish, so it's in uh, Spanish? there's English rules in there. Actually, all these games from them they had to give us English rules on the side. Yes. Orb Hunters is uh, pretty cool. I I didn't like the two player experience because it was too tick for tack. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably a better three and four player game. But basically, what it is is you have a line of uh, four different relics, and you are playing cards underneath of those relics to try to gain the items. Uh, some of the cards will affect other rows, other columns, um, and basically there's a lot of take that on, and positioning on trying to get um, those particular relics. Because the relics will give you points, but also they have damage, so the player has the most damage at the end of the game, regardless how many points is ejected from the game. And then the other players compete, and then you have wounds, which can uh, also affect those in-game points. So. Pretty cool game. Yes, and the art is great. It needs to be. We need to play this three or four players, but uh, as we it stands, a two-player game, it was just okay for It was me. okay, but it was uh, cute. So I liked what it was doing. So Quinn had had a whole line of these smaller box games. Uh, they described these as go to lunch and play a quick, you know, twenty-minute game with people. This one looks incredibly interesting. I actually know people who play this, and they said it's great. It, it's cool. You have these cards, we and what you're trying to do is build a city or a district that's going to basically. 
uh, line up and you have different goal cards that you're trying to meet as a group. The trick is when you have the cards, you're going to play one and then you're going to pass the rest to your neighbor. It's cooperative and you're trying to work together to meet those particular goals. And on the back of all the cards that you don't use uh, that you're playing with are going to be the goals. So there's a ton of different goals that you're trying to reach in this game. Um, and the, the points that you're trying to score in the game are according to the points that are laid out. So if these were our three goals, we'd have to get 26 points by adding these up, by doing these types of things. You could score all the points from this if you wanted, but the end, you have to beat that particular number. Looks super, super interesting look, and, and very look simple. And even matches up too. Look, is that not adorable? Mm, that's amazing. Kira. I get excited about the littlest things, folks. All right. That's amazing. So that's uh, Sprawlopolis, Sprawlopolis from Quinted. So 1942, they have a whole bunch of games that are based around different yes. uh, time periods. And this one, I mean, they all stick out as games that we're interested in, but this particular one stuck out because... It's worker placement, number one. Uh -huh. And number two, because... Uh, it's World War II. It's World War II. Yeah, so anytime Looping comes out with a game, I'm interested. They pack a lot of game in a very small box. Uh, I haven't had a chance to play this. In fact, I haven't opened up the cards yet just because nope. of the sheer number of stuff that we have right there's now. There's planes, but, uh, and there's even cuter little plane chips. This is one of the booths that I went back and, you know, oh every gosh. day to try to get them. Before, oh, <laughs> we kept trying to go before the hall opened, and yeah. they were definitely all set up and Not relaxing. Ready <laughs> Somewhere. Somewhere having coffee. And I was coffee. being buggy trying to get yes. a copy of it, so... Apologies to all of those vendors that I walked around with, with with euros in my hand trying to buy stuff early. Yeah. I'm not really sorry because I paid the money for yes. games. But uh, bees. This is from, I'm not going to open this because I want to open. Anyway, it's from Awaken Realms Light and Van Ryder Games. Uh, super, super light game. Mm -hmm. So if you know Van Ryder, you know Detective. If you know Awaken Realms, you know like Lords of Hellas, Tainted Tainted Grail, Grail, Nemesis. Um, this is basically just a set collection game where you're trying to score points with bees, collecting sets of different color cubes and then using the, our gems and then using those to buy uh, bee cards. Yeah, so you have different uh, flower cards which are yep. going to give you different types of pollen and then you have your pollen cards which are going to give you your different types of point scoring opportunities as well as special abilities. It's a very quick, very light and an appropriately named Awaken Realms light game and beautiful art. Look at that, 6 to 99. Age. That's crazy. Yeah, I think six, you can just take out all the cards. There are cards that just don't have any text. Mm -hmm. So that makes it very easy to play with any age group. But I mean, you can just explain it. It's all icons. You don't see that often. Six, no. two, ninety nine. Like, I wonder if someone who's 100 can't play that. I wonder as well. Or is it just that there wasn't really like enough space graphics? Enough space. They just push That's it over. Probably, yeah. Anyway, don't say that too often. Let us know. Yeah. All right. Uh, what else we got? Uh, well, this one's already, is this out in the States yet? Everybody knows. Yeah. I think it just, well, I think it's... It was for sale at... I think the pre-order is either going live this week or if it hasn't already gone live. The 4th or the 8th. Oh, we it haven't, the 8th. yeah, we haven't done a review of it yet, um, but it's a good time to talk about it right now. I'm mm -hmm. a sucker for Wingspan. Wingspan will be on my top mm -hmm. 10 of the year. I think it's Absolutely. a super accessible game. I think it's a very fun game. It can be played with anybody. There's a lot of different combos. Uh, each time you play, it's going to be wildly different because every single card in the game is different. This adds a huge number of new birds and some new abilities in it. If you have played Wingspan and you enjoy it or if it's on your collection, in your collection, this is definitely worthy of um, purchasing. Well, also so brings you uh, purple eggs, purple eggs, which are lovely uh, addition, just to have more eggs, which is nice. And the new, new teal goals, ability, new teal abilities, new all kinds of lovely things. So, uh, and definitely lots more birds cards. So, if you think you hadn't broken into all the birds yet, you've got even more now. So, wingspan. European expansion. European expansion. We're probably 10 games in out of 50. This is amazing. Easily. Let's talk about this because okay. you love, we all love this game. So this is the One other of game. two games I personally brought back. Yeah, so this is the other game in Awaken Realms Light series. It's called Flick of Faith. We have a review up of it. Invite you guys to go look at that. But the production value, as you can simply see right here, is amazing. It's a flicking game that's really, really well produced. Feels very crokinole. So if you like crokinole, you'll probably love this. You've got all this wonderful extra art, and I mean, my favorite here, and even just there's even variations all over the box of the different art, but you can see all the bits here. There's a wonderful map that comes here that, yes, everything slides accordingly. You've got these law cards, which uh, two will come out every round, and mm -hmm. you're going to vote on which one you guys get to use. 
and he's got the, all the gods have abilities and just add a little bit more of a game to uh, like a Crokinole vibe. Yeah, so if you like dexterity games, and I've played a lot of them, mm -hmm. this is definitely the one that will replace almost all of them just because it's super accessible, super easy to teach and play. It sets up really fast, it looks fantastic. And those law cards, the first time I played this game, I didn't want to like it because I thought the law cards were kind of gimmicky, the whole vote up, vote down. But that actually frames the game in a really unique way because every round you have something different that you're trying to do in order to score points. It's, it's really, really good. So speaking of dexterity, Lick -of -faith. bring the other dexterity game that I brought home, which was, in my, was my number one most anticipated. So there's this bag because that's just what I brought in. And I actually re-bought the original. This is called Physical Elements, uh, is the expansion that came out at Essen this year. And these pieces are ridiculous. So you have, these are the new pieces, so they're really crazy looking compared to the originals, which looked like this. And what you have are barriers, which are these longer pieces here. You have your Lord, which is this giant piece. And then you have all uh, your little soldiers, if you will. And they're going to be the ones you're flicking. And you can flick the Lord. You can't flick the barriers. And now you have all these new things. And you can create some three-dimensional barrier-type opportunities. And you can flick this whole thing. And it's just nuts. And there's one for every element. Plus there's light and dark. And I mean, like, seriously, this is oh all the stuff that I got. So there's so much. How much was all this, by the way? I can't tell you. I don't remember. <laughs> you don't remember? No, because I was going to get a big old it. stack of yours well, and said, this is like the one game you've been wanting for quite some time. Yes, though. because I knew that they had tweaked some of the original design. Right. And I wanted to get the new stuff because I this was I picked this up at Essen two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I wanted everything then. There's this fifth element that's the god element. So that's if you want to have five players. The six player one's the dark element. This is what's really cool because you don't get a lord if you're in the dark element. Yeah. You have to uh, you have to knock somebody else's lord out, then you gain their lord, and you can't die until you have a lord. That's a really neat thing about this versus yeah. Flick of Faith is that it does have that. Plus, it's uh, the space that you can play on. You could play on this giant table, which you can't mm -hmm. actually see here, but this is a huge playing surface, and that's the kind of game, the yes. space you would need for a game and like that. And you choose your, you, you actually have a play mat for it, so you can keep the area small, but it, you choose where your barrier areas are, and then once it's off the table, it's done. So. Uh, that's physical gaming, four elements, and the advanced elements, and it's wonderful, and everyone should try it. All right, so this is Brussels 1893. It is from Geek Attitude Games. It is a, a continuation mostly of um, Brussels 1893. Uh, they both play, uh, I don't want to say they both play in the same way. They don't, but they do, mm -hmm. kind of. Um, but they both look, they feel familiar. Maybe that's the best thing I'm trying to say. The, uh, the same similarity you have between Marco Polo 1 and Marco Polo 2, it's the same you'll feel you'll get from Brussels. And I had no idea that it was this small of a box. I mean, this is a tiny little box. I actually got to play this right before we left for Spiel. Uh, I love it. It it's, uh, does everything that the first game does uh, in a shorter time period. It's, it's basically hand management, action selection, and trying to outwear your opponent. Um, it plays great at two players. I haven't played at three and four, but if it plays anything like the original Brussels, I know it'll play great at those player counts as well. Cool. Um, I have no idea what this game is, and so I definitely <laughs> want to give it a shot. It sounds really cool. It's super cool. fun. It's just a super strategic card game. Um, and it's I all guess. cards. This all is all cards. cards. So that's Brussels. So heavy, it's a heavy little box, too. So, so yes. another World War II game. This is one that I pre-purchased before I went to the show. Uh, it says World War II in 20 minutes, and it is very much World War II in 20 minutes. It is a tug-of-war game, uh, not unlike the same feeling you might get from Watergate, where it's back and forth constantly. It's done very differently, though. You have tiles behind your player shield. You have three at any given time, or more, possibly, and you're using one of those tiles to place on a board. Uh, and on that board, there's several different operations. Uh, that's the Nippon one. Here's the main one. We'll do this one. On the board, you have several different areas of operation, uh, five in this game. And you're basically filling up these rows from top to bottom on any one that you wish. When one of them fills up, you're going to score points on the victory point track. This is a tug of war in each of these sections. And all the tiles that you use are going to have various abilities. You have air tiles, which can be placed on either land or water. You have uh, land, which can be placed on land, and water, which can be placed on water, plus a whole bunch of other unique tiles. Um, the first time we played it, it felt very, you know, just 
matter of fact, you're placing tiles. But I can see where the strategy comes in, especially once you learn uh, the number of tiles that you have in mm -hmm. your bag. You learn what all these different actions do once you lay your tile on it. Um, it's very nuanced. Plus, there is an expansion that I got as well that is Japanese themed and it has Godzilla. It does have Godzilla and you have this whole other board and... It's alternate universe, obviously. Yeah, this is this universe. is real. Uh, no, I mean, it's as real as real can be, obviously. It's, but Yeah, it, this is brings a little fantasy into the game. If you want it, you don't have to have it if you don't want it, but why not? Just and, have some fun with life. And this is, uh, as you can see, the U.S. Don't get upset about Godzilla. Mm, Defeat this, Godzilla. This is if the U.S. had been invaded and we lost. Exactly. Which almost happened. It did almost happen. Have you seen that show that basically <laughs> says what happens if... Man in High win? Castle? Yeah. Yeah, that would, crazy have been, show. that would have been awful. All right. All right. Um, what, do you got, what do you got next? I have a whole bunch of stuff over here. You've I got have. Stack than me still. I've got this one, and let me reach over here. Go ahead and talk about. Did you play card? I did card? not play this. You're. In, I'll, I can talk about the other one. All right. So we got three games oh, from Devere. Um, we played both of them. Kari Kari is basically an area control game that uses tiles uh, to represent. Pirate uh, parrots. Yeah, locations. You're building the board with other players. It was just okay for me. We, um, I don't know. I, I've played a million games like this. This one, however, was super interesting. This mm -hmm. one is called Paris. We did a review of this it's one. It's approved, is it not? It is approved. And you're actually building a city inside of the board. So these tiles, as you can see, can be lifted up. So this is actually a structure uh, where you're building a city against an opponent. It's just yeah. two players. You don't take this out. The, this, this, yeah. this is the, the game. The, these tiles come out, but the rest of it is actually part of the box. And you have uh, all these different tiles that go on there once the structure is built out. Uh, you're going to get points for those, but one of the m coolest things are these postcards that come with it, too. You can't really see There's it. a whole bunch of super pretty postcards in here. Oops. And the back side of the postcards are actually the player abilities that you get to utilize uh, during the round and only one player can get one of these at a time so if I have this one uh, the other my opponent can't actually grab it it was a super fun two-player game and um, you guys all seem to really like it yeah it's, it's it's solid for sure I got a good overview of it and it seems like a game I will enjoy as well I don't know the full name it's Paris la cité de la it's lumière it's the city of lights in English boom there you go what you got? all right what do I have? Oh my gosh, I still have, like, you have a bigger pile. All right, but I'll, I'll go, go ahead and bring I'll out go. Hadara. You go. Oh boy, so Hadara, yeah, that's Hadara. that's Hadara. Um, it's no different. But there are some new things in here that I can briefly explain. So we didn't get a box for this one, so that's yeah. why there's no, it's with little bags. So these are new rules for two of the new things. One came with the rules, one I had to pre-print. There's two new things that are being added to the game. One are the monuments. Uh, there are now monuments that you can build within the game. These monuments, as you can see, can you see this? Yes, right here. Yes. These monuments are going to be able to be built according to what you have achieved. So these have to have a 24 blue and 24 red in order to get them. And they're going to work very much like the colonies where you're going to uh, turn them over or keep them and get money or to get uh, some, whatever else is on the backside. You can slot your tokens in there, your bonus tokens in there to gain um, access to those. So this is different. And then the Nobles and Inventions adds a whole bunch of new cards. I think it was four cards for all of the heiress of all the colors. Um, Are there things we can look at in here or is it just the rules? It's, I mean, they're in there. I would have oh. to fish them out, but... Um, one of the more unique things here is that it has cards that actually take away from your track. So this one has four blue that it gives to you, but also negative one green. Ooh. And then there are ones that, you know how you get that, um, you get a reduction in cost. If I have a three blues and I play my fourth blue, the cost of that fourth blue is minus the three on whatever that coin cost is. Well, these cards now prevent that ability from ever happening, but they're super strong. Neat. So um, these these just came in a little blister pack and a little pack of cards. There was no box for this. It was just a small little expansion. We need to play this soon because I'm excited. We haven't played it, but Hadara is a fantastic yeah, light like, civ game. We like the game already. Okay, Troya. Troya. This is super cute. Uh, yep. Two player game. You are. Uh, playing against. Uh, well, you're, it's the Greeks versus yeah, the Trojans. The, yes. Did I and say that right? I think so. Yes. And you have these little standees. 
you want to get that out. Yeah, so this one is also a tug of war. So this is, again falls in line with Blitzkrieg and Watergate. We almost played it wrong because Jeremy kept moving my pieces. Yeah. Because the pieces have different colors on either side. And so depending on which side you're playing on, you're going to move them around the board. Up or down. Up or down this way. And so you're either seeing this side or this side, depending on which side you're on. Yeah, so this board would actually be between us, mm -hmm. and I would represent the Trojans, and she would represent the Greeks, and we're trying to get them to the opponent's side in order to um, do one of two things. As the Greeks, I'm trying to invade their area. As the Trojans, I'm trying to get uh, my two guys onto their ships, basically. And, we... and it's very much a tug of war. You're using cards to manipulate the gods. Uh, there's gods over here that you can pull towards you to be able to enact their powers. You have these, which are the heroes, which are the ones that are going to move. There are five columns here, or rows, that you're going to move, be moving back and forth to. It's a, it's a pretty cool game. Uh, we've only it. played it once. Um, I liked it, though. Yeah, the art drew me it. in. The yeah. art's fantastic in this game. Yeah, it's a cool little company, and they have a bunch of little games, but this was uh, definitely one that stuck out. They're called GDM. Yes. And I believe they have to be Spanish as well, maybe? Maybe. Does it not say on the box? Mm. Sometimes it does. Well, their first language is Spanish, so there, that yeah. would tell me that it's a Spanish That company. tells us what we need to know. So that is Troya, and it's fun. They're not it's fun. enough just built for two-player games It's anyway. okay. Not great, not bad, just kind of okay for me. Yeah, I mean, it's a light game. I think it's intentionally meant to be so. Sure. All right, what do you got? Um, Fistful of Meeples. Fistful of Meeples. This is Johnny Pack. It is Johnny Pack. I love Johnny Pack stuff. So uh, I don't know. I know I they can gave talk us. About yeah, it. they gave us an overview, but we haven't actually played it yet. So this is from Johnny Pack. He did uh, Coloma. What else did he did? Coloma. Coloma. Mm -hmm. Whatever it's called, Coloma. He does Western games. He does a ton of Western games. Art from the Miko. This is a Rondell game where you're moving guys around. Everyone shares the same color meeples. Um, and meeples have different types of abilities. You have like outlaws, you have sheriffs. Um, and where they go on the board determines what they do. I've not played it yet, but it looks super cool. There's a lot of people that really enjoy it. It's a small box game, mm -hmm. uh, 30 minutes for two to four players. I'm excited to try it. I like pretty much anything that he does. Um, was Sierra West he also did, yeah. which is a really cool game. Um, he had a hand in Merchant's Cove. He He's did. He's one of the he developers develop on that. Merchant's Cove. So, I mean, one, if it's Western, probably should have his stamp of approval anyway. Uh, and two, like, oh, we haven't played anything we haven't liked from him yet, so. It, he's uh, he, he's going to take off, I imagine, oh, the next absolutely. year or two. He's going to be a commonly known name uh, for all the good games he's developed lately, so. Yeah. This he's meeples. great. Cool. What you got? I mean, our favorite. <laughs> yeah, so we've talked a lot about Crystal Palace already. Uh, we actually live stream this for our SN live stream. Uh, this is, uh, again, one of my top games of this year. It is a fantastic uh, dice game, a dice worker placement game mm -hmm. in which your dice are never rolled. They're set to whatever value that you want. Uh, if there are, if you are a mid to maybe a little more heavyweight Euro gamer, uh, this is one of the games that you need to pick up this year. It's a fantastic, oh, fantastic game. It's being brought over from Capstone. Uh, Furlan has released it in Europe. Um, I would suggest going online to maybe read the rules if you're interested. Uh, watch our live play. The other cool thing about this is there's a couple games every year that Uwe Rosenberg um, helps uh, consult mm -hmm. and whenever I see his little stamp of approval in a rule book you know the game is going to hit a lot of cylinders for a lot of people and this mm -hmm. is one of those games that he helped uh, develop or contribute to in some way absolutely so really 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 good game um, easily in my top uh, five this year I don't know oh. where it's gonna sit but it's it's great it's really yeah. really great game it's definitely a big contender for, uh, I know, Ryan as well, so um, we really like it. So here's another fun one. Yes. Yeah, so Marco Polo 2 in the service of the con. I did a versus episode last Monday on this one to tell you the difference between this game and the original game. Uh, it is very similar structurally in the way that you play both of these games. You're doing basically the same types of things. However, all the action spaces have been reworked. They've been changed, so the actions that you take are going to change. There are now seals that you have to acquire in order to travel across some locations. Travel in this game is a lot easier. It feels more sandboxy. You're never, 
Uh, you're never dealt a card at the beginning that says you have to go from this location to this location to get points. Um, there are cards you will get that will give you some kind of bonuses, but it's really up to you on how you travel. Uh, the, the, um, the problem I see with this game is that I think a lot of people are going to write it off because it's from the same uh, two designers, which are fantastic. It's Simone Luciani and uh, Daniel Tassini, uh, and from the same artist. So they look and they feel very, very similar. And I, I don't think that should stop people from trying the game. I felt like there was a lot... And I only played the original Marco Polo like once or twice. Mm -hmm. But I felt that the decisions were more important when I was in this game. Like everything that you're doing felt more important and that uh, it was just, I don't know, chunkier, beefier. It, it definitely feels like a, a heavier Euro game um, than the original for yeah. sure. And there are a lot of little things about the first one that I didn't love. And I've, I've told uh, Simone this before too, that I love all of his games, but this is probably the one that I least like. I think it's one of his favorites that he's made. Uh, but this is cool. This is, uh, this is, if you were to ask me right now. It's an improvement over the It's original. an improvement of the original, and I will keep this one and get rid of the original and the expansion for the original. So, really? Okay. Yeah, I don't yeah. have, I don't need I, both I don't of them, and this does that. for me If the I were same. to get one, I'd get this one. Sure. Absolutely. I, if my husband played those kind of games, I would pick it up Well, he myself. should play those type I of games. I wish he would. All right, so this one, I know there's a lot of really exciting things about this one. I, I have never played the one everybody kept referencing. Oh, my goods? Oh, my goods. Played this at the show, really enjoyed it. Played it again when we got back. Now we just play. I, we just played the initial, but you and Sarah mm -hmm. have been playing through the actual chapters, right? Yeah. So before I get into that, this is the coolest mm -hmm. thing. I got to I don't meet know if Clemens. They can see that yeah, really it's, well. it's signed from Clem Clemens Franz. I had a yeah. chance to meet the artist who's done a huge number of games that I love. I I love all this stuff because it Super just speaks. Nice guy. It speaks Euro to me. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, this is can be played in eight different chapters. Uh, depending on how well you do in one chapter, can determine the board that you play on a in a second chapter so there are th three boards in here all the boards are double sided I'm sorry all my stuff is upstairs on the table because my wife and I have been playing it but as you can see this board right here uh, could be one of the boards that you visit and one of the neat things is the boards depending on where you go could have additional worker placement spots that you could visit and then if you look on the back side there is a board here that you can traverse and then there is another board right here which is the main board and then there's another board here and then there's two more boards upstairs and uh, as you play the game more and more cards are going to be interjected into the game more buildings more things that you can do more characters mm -hmm. more events um, so the game evolves over time uh, and it's basically oh my goods as a board game uh, which i really enjoy very simple game to teach as well john wheeler agrees with you about uh, Marco Polo, by the way, and as oh, he's far as it? on his list of least favorite, he tends yeah. to like all those games, but it was the least favorite for him as well. Yeah, Marco Polo, I don't know what it is. It just never set quite right for me. So, anyway. Well, I'd love to play more of that one, but... I've got all kinds of stuff over here. You want to... Yeah. Yep. Okay. So this was the big Studio H uh, game uh, from Tony Boydell. You probably heard that name as well. Uh, he did Snowdonia. He did Guilds of London, a whole wide variety of stuff. We played this on our live stream. I've played this two player and three player. The two player game was okay. The three player game was one of the best games I played on the live stream. It is a really, really fun game that uh, does a lot of things that Snowdonia does. It just kind of I don't want to say it pairs it down, but it makes it a lot more streamlined, really fun, super inter interactive game. You're constantly getting in the way of other people. Uh, the production values on it say, are... Because on the live stream, we had a prototype. So we yeah, no, this is this, done. This is done. This yeah, is this is a nice. done game. And uh, it's really, Beautiful. really pretty. I'm not going to fold the beautiful. other piece out, but it's... It's yeah. super gorgeous. You've got all these lovely little tea leaves. Yeah, they even had some like promo cards uh, that you could mm -hmm. get at the show. It's just a very nice production, and the guys really liked it. I did not. I was on the monitor managing that side of things during the stream, so I'll have yeah. to get a chance to play this. This soon. is what drives the whole game, and these are the action spots that you're going to be going to and competing for. This is what makes the game great up here because there are a limited number of spaces that you can go to, and people are going to be fighting nonstop for those spaces, and there's ways to kind of like. Uh, but in front of other players so they don't get the action, which mm -hmm. I absolutely love. No so, direct interaction, but it's more indirect. We're being asked if the other guys are going to show off, but 
Well, I Ella probably will do some of her stuff as well. Oh, but sure. The, the, there was just the three of us there this year. Yep. So, and she is in Australia, so she couldn't join us here in the studio. This is Cairn, or Karn, or something Karn. like that. Karn, it's Karn? I believe it's Karn. This is Matigo. Yep. Uh, this is a two-player little game. It kind of feels a little bit like Onitama-ish, right? Very there much was, like onitama -ish. There was a little uh, Onitama. Now, things I love about this game, I will say right up, straight up, these miniatures are adorable pretty he's cool he's got little bird on his head this one's got a little tuft hair sticking out of his hat and then the other side uh these guys all have he's got like a pig hat on they're really cool so the game is uh what you're trying to do is score points and one of the players is going to start on this side of the board one player is going to start on this side of the board and, Hi, you're, Ella. and you're trying to move your guys either to the opposing village um, or collect very specific tiles in order to gain the points. What well, the cool thing is, over here are going to be three tiles that are, have two sides to them. And depending upon which action you take, it's going to flip it to the other side, meaning the opponent can then use that other side. Mm -hmm. The whole game is driven by these three actions that you see here. These will never change. And these allow you to move an adjacent space, jump over one of your pieces, jump over an opponent's piece, move diagonally, move orthogonally. Uh, and then you have all these different things that'll be out on the board that when you land on them, they're going to do some kind of special action as well. Very, very unique game. Uh, very fast, too. This is one of my anticipated games for Essen, and I, I did like it. It's Christian Martinez. We like him as a designer. He's awesome. Awesome. He did Inish and... Uh, Inish. I don't know what else he did. Yeah, he probably did that. At least Inish. So uh, I know he's done other stuff. But I got to say, as much as I... As cute as it is, I rather play Onitama, I think. <laughs> but I like I it. It's, it. It has some different, it does something different, and so I think, but I think if I were going to have to choose between the two because they have a similar vibe to them, I'd probably still pick Onitama. It's but I like chaos. it. It's cute. Uh, so this is the second one from Board and Dice. Uh, this is another unlock game with a story. It's kind of an escape room game. We will be live streaming this at some point. Either this um, week or next week. We haven't decided yet. Yes. So I'm not going to get too much into this. Um, if you don't want to be spoiled, don't watch the live stream. Yeah. But it is a very intense story. The first one was intense. This one's going to be equally intense. Um, it is a longer escape room. I'm not sure the total length that it says here. Where is it? Uh, three by three hours. So there's three sessions for three hours each. Nine yeah. hours. Is that oh, right? Oh, wow. I think so. So I don't Maybe know Maybe we won't be playing it. Well, we're definitely going to live stream it. We may, just, we may just get people started on it, or maybe we'll do multiple. We haven't decided yet. Stay tuned for more information Stay on that. Stay tuned for more. All right, so this was for sale at the show, too. We live streamed this. We did not pick up a copy of it. Um, it's a spatial game where you're going to be moving around, placing tiles in very specific ways. It looks very, very cool. The artwork is fantastic. I just We didn't have any room in our suitcase to get it back. No. And I haven't played it. No. Jeremy Howard, David, and Ryan have played yes. it. I think that's probably why we didn't pick up, because neither one of us played the game. No. I, it, to, for me, it wasn't. Uh, there wasn't a lot that draws me into this one personally, mm -hmm. as far as the type of gameplay and the art and everything. The concept is super cool. The theme is interesting. It's super pretty. It didn't. Uh, that one didn't scream out you. to me. Yeah, Save the Meeples. I pre-ordered this before Essen because I love the concept. You're basically bad humans and we're meeples trying to save each other. This has a lot of things going on here. They have these 3D spaceships that you build. They have these tracks, which are basically railroad tracks that will... Is there a back... I have to flip over the back of the box, but these railroad tracks are going to be put together. You have these awesome looking trains that you have. And then the coolest thing are these terragami things, which are really hard to put together. They're almost frustrating in a way, but... Did you get any of them? Did no. You started to. But if you, you don't know what terragami is, it's it's one of those 3D environment things that once you fold it, it looks like it's popping it's out like of the... It's like a pop-up book. It's like a pop-up book. And these are going to be at the end of the four different railroad tracks. Uh, it's a very unique game, which you're trying to either do one of two things. The game can end in one of two ways, and that's by shipping people off to this planet or doing something else. I don't remember. I read the rules, and I forget. But there's two ways the game can end. I'm going to flip this over so yeah, people can see the back side. Sure because everything's in here in a way that you can close it. There you yeah. go. Let me uh, show you the back uh -huh. side because this, this looks super cool. So, yeah. As you can see, the train tracks lead out, and then you have train tracks that lead out this way. 
Uh, this ship will actually go here and deposit some maples, and then these are all worker placement actions, but you have to put your people on the train in order to get out to these locations. Mm. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Again, a game that we I pre-ordered. I didn't. I only pre-ordered because of the art, and it's from Blue Cocker. They did Welcome To. Mm -hmm. so, oh, yeah. Might as well try it. Yeah, we're definitely going to try that. So Deep Blue, this is by Daniel and Asger, mm -hmm. who are the uh, creators of Flamme Rouge, mm -hmm. of 13 Days. Uh, and they had lots going on at Essen, this being yeah. one of them with Days of Wonder. Plus, they launched their own label, Sidekick Games, which is they have the, the, the studio that is designed behind this. So uh, I did not finish our first game of this. You've played it since. Though, <laughs> I have played correct? it. I've played it three times. Um, this game is more than likely better with multiple players because you're going to be sharing a lot of these areas together. Number one, the game is absolutely gorgeous. Anytime you have a Days of Wonder beautiful. game, the game is going to look beautiful. But you can see from the artwork here. There's little it's, treasure chests. Yeah, it's it's totally a push your luck game because as you move around the board through these different locations, you're going to be going on dives. Uh, you have the ability when someone goes to a dive, if you're either in that spot or adjacent to them, you can be sucked in to go on that dive with them. And you're trying to pull up gems uh, that could be worth an X number of victory points by getting your ships in the right type of spaces. Mm -hmm. um, you have a lot of different cards that are going to enhance your abilities and you're using those cards until you use a card that picks them all back up. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of cool things going for it. Uh, I do think that this game is better when you play uh, more than two players, obviously. If you have three or four uh, players playing or even five, you're just going to have a lot more opportunity to go on dives than what you typically would. Because in a two-player game, people can completely di diversify and go in two different locations. Yeah, we tried it at two-player, and and there we needed to get some clarification on things, so I never got back to it. But it it was interesting for sure. Gorgeous. Sounds like better with more Absolutely players. Absolutely gorgeous. And the components in the game too. Those little ships are cool, super cool. Pareto Porter. So this is a game on fashion, and don't turn away because. Uh, it's really good. Um, this a is a yeah, game. it's a worker placement game. It's from Ignacy and Quan Chai did the art. This is the new edition of the game. It was kickstarted. This is the final version. I've not played this final version, but we did a Kickstarter video uh, when the game was first on uh, Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Looks gorgeous. The production value, wow, of course, production came looks out really nice. Looks amazing. Um, not really. I mean, go to our go to watch our video. Yeah, definitely. If you're interested at all, game. and I yeah, don't turn your head because it's fashion themed. It's actually really neat. Yeah, and the this decisions you have to make in the game, uh, in the world of fashion, are very interesting. God, there's games everywhere. We're running out of room, Jeremy. All right, let's quickly talk about this one. We've played this one as well. Yeah, so found us from Catch Up Games. It is one to five player. It is an Egyptian themed game. Is it good with a, two, somebody's asking? Um, yeah, it's fine with two. Okay. It plays great all player counts. Uh, Farallon is really unique because um, a couple things. Number one, you have this inner dial that you have to pay into in order to gain access to the outer dial. And the inner dial, if it matches the things you're paying on the outside, can you be used as a deduction? So there's a lot of set collection in here, trying to get the right types of things to power your abilities. Uh, there's a lot of in-game scoring with the cards that you collect and the different statues that you're trying to meet at the end of the game. We also live stream this. We scored it a little bit wrong at the end. Uh, which is our own fault, but the gameplay itself is rock solid. Yes, very much. All right. It's pretty too. Federal. All right. Aquatica. This was like, this was their on. booth was insanity. Yeah. Uh, let's just stop right there. <laughs> Talk a little bit about impressions from the show. One of the cool things about Essen, about Spiel, I should say, because Essen's the city that Spiel takes place in, is that it's a very big trade show. So you see some really gorgeous booths. But if they're really busy... And they did their best to make sure they had plenty of tables for everybody, but boy, was it hard to move in that booth. Yeah, it was packed. This game uh, was in the top five on the BGG oh, yeah. hot list. It's gorgeous. Uh, it is a, it's a, it's a pretty cool game. You're uh, trying to uh, meet one of four different goals, or all four of the goals, which can change at the start of the game, depending upon whatever's at the top of the board. There's some pre-printed ones on there, but you also have the ability to get uh, some variety with these goals that you have here. And you're basically acquiring different um, landmarks under the sea and trying to raise them up. And by raising them up, you can score them and put them in your treasure chest in order to do different things. Uh, and then these little mantas, which are really awesome. Uh, they're two-sided. 
which are going to show your player collar or a neutral one on the back side and then the actual building on the other side. And they look like mantis, they're like little plastic well, cases. And you can't sleeve these because they have to go into the board. So somebody's saying no sleeve need... on these. I don't think there there's not enough room for sleeving. Mm. They're meant to go up here and slide up. And as they slide up, they're different things snug. are going to yep. triggle. Trigger. Triggle. Triggle. Trigger. And it's the just it's really satisfying to to play the game and see all those cool things happen. With this game. Uh, this game I really enjoy. Now I do have one issue with this. Maybe it's just because Leave of cars. the type of gamer that I am. Uh, gamers who do have played like Magic the Gathering or do really good with hand management or can see combos in advance can trigger the game really fast. Like we played this on the live stream and I think I triggered the game in the fifth I mean, or sixth round. Yeah. It, was, it was super fast. Um, so there's definitely, a, you want to put that on top, an advantage for people that um, But if you're somebody that, who likes to just kind of see what you can do, if you have a gamer group like that, or if you are all alpha gamers, you kind of need both because if you have an alpha gamer mixed in to a bunch of non-alpha gamers, they're going to kind of end the game quick. It's a fantastic game. But it's a great game. All, all right. right. A whole bunch of st I got so many. I've games only over got here. like two left over here, so you need All to right. go for a few. All right, so this one is from it was from uh, Japan brand. Uh, it is called Orchard Ocean. It is a tile placement game, which you're moving tiles around. Uh, you're going to be drafting tiles. Some of them will allow you to place in very specific locations. You're going to be filling up your board, which is this board right here. And as you fill up this board, uh, you can see directional things: northeast, south, and west. Um, where you can place new tiles depending upon the tile that you're drafting. You have like north, east, south, and west mm -hmm. tiles. And then all these will kind of intermix during production phases depending upon how far away they are mm -hmm. from other things. Um, it looks super interesting and I always like taking a chance on one or two like super obscure games. Yes. And this is one of those games that I thought was super obscure. And so yeah, Orchard It's very Ocean. cool looking and the explanation we got was was intriguing. So I'm and looking in Japanese. forward to Yes. Kind of, so it's kind of hard to understand some of it, but... Well, they did a wonderful job. I'm excited to try it. Yes. And that one we haven't tried. No, we have not. And we haven't tried this one. You know more about this game than I do. Oh, yes, on the underground. So this is Luda Creations, and the, one of the wonderful things about this is that they took an old game, mm -hmm. they refreshed it, they gave it this new cover, and it was originally just London, obviously, on the underground, if you know anything about London. That's the name of their underground subway system. So uh, what they did was they added Berlin to the game. So oh. now you have... You're on the front side of the box again. Uh, this is the wrong side <laughs> of the box. Hold on. Wait, no. This is the wrong side of the box. Hold on. That's weird. All I right. wonder if they put one of those slip sheets on the back so people know. Oh, it's right here. It's on the side. Oh, yeah. it's on the spine. So mm. I bet you when it gets to retail, there'll be something on the back because obviously... People always go to the back of the box. You should always, that, as cool as that is, you should always have yes. something on the back of the box that explains what it is. Most well, until know. you open it. So I think under the plastic, yes. I think that I think they will yeah. probably do that for retail. But uh, they they updated this game in a beautiful way, and it is just do you know what kind of, I have no idea even what kind of game this is. Well, you? it's kind of... I don't, I don't know. Want to say I don't like even want to. I don't want to guess. No, but... it can't be Ticket to Ride -ish. It may look like Ticket to Ride -ish, yes. but I don't think it is. Well, you're you're building the undergrounds. It's that's purdy. what you're doing. It's super purdy. So the board is. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's cool looking. It's gorgeous, and you've got two it's, sides it looks because giant. one side is London and one side is Berlin. The map is huge. It's huge because you're building the underground. No, I get it, but it's just very large map. Yes. So. I haven't had a chance to play it yet. I'm yeah. very much looking forward to it, and we'll tell you more about it once we do, because goodness gracious, I am just very many. intrigued by all the bits. And like even just the inside of the box is gorgeous. This is one of the problems, there's just too many games. There's too many games. But this was, yeah, it was just on Kickstarter. There's the inside of the other side of the box. So we will tell you more about it. All right, this is another game that got yeah, super building. high rated uh, at um, the show. Trails. This is a really, really good game. It's called The Magnificent. Again, this is a game that you should go check out our live stream to see the whole game being played. Uh, it is, uh, you're basically running a carnival and it's got a couple different things going on. It's got worker placement where you're placing your workers to take actions. It's also got tile placement because you're building up your own carnival by placing these little tiles on your player board in order to gain different actions. Uh, it's got this really black 
monotone look to it, but it's striking when you actually see it. Well, yeah, it's, it looks that way, but there's pops of color everywhere. everywhere. Mm -hmm. The dice, everything, the gems, and it brings everything to life, and you really feel like you're under the big tent, and the, the pops of light or the spotlight on whatever you're watching. And so, uh, and really... And it's got dice drafting. Yeah, really enjoy this one, and it's also very gorgeous. The art is incredible, and it just makes the whole game quite enjoyable to play. Very good game. All right, so this is the uh, version that we got uh, to do the live stream. We already talked about this one um, quite a bit. Cooper Island. We like it. Yeah, it is. Capstone's uh, on fire. It's from Ode. Uh, he did La Grana. Uh, you're basically uh, trying to move your boats around these different peninsulas. Each player has a peninsula. This one has worker placement as well. It also has tile placement. We were building your own little colony using different types of terrain and then placing settlements on those trains to get actions. This is a game that is, it's very heavy um, in comparison to some of the other games that we've talked about tonight. Uh, it's also um, very restricting. This isn't a game that you're gonna be able to do everything you want. You're gonna be, have to go down one path and do that path really well, which some people may love and some people mm -hmm. may not enjoy that. So sure. it depends on what kind of gamer you are. I happen to like that where you pick something and then you just push it as hard as you can. Some people like the freedom to do everything in a game and by the end of the game they have everything they wanted to get done. You are not going to do that this in this. This is not that game. No. No. If you want, like, you just have to make a decision and stick with it because it's a very tight game. Yeah. Very tight. Good game though. Cooper Island. Great game. All right. Another live stream game. Yeah, so we also live stream this. This is definitely 100% a party game. I can't even pick Plays this in about up. 45 minutes. Again, artwork that's fantastic from Lucky Duck. You are basically playing very a very similar game to uh, what's one I'm thinking about? Um, Mysterium. Mysterium, yes. You're trying to solve mm. a clue, yeah, with with a ghost, and the ghost is giving you clues. Um, and those clues may be in the form of uh, different types of things, depending upon what drawing you use, on drawing on your back, using rope in a certain combination. Uh, everyone at the table is going to be able to see what it, the clue is you're giving to them. Maybe you're voicing it but not saying anything with your lips. Some of them, like the writing on the back, only you that player is going to know. Gonna know. Yeah. So you're trying to deduce a couple of different things, like what happened to that person, how did they die, where did they die, what was the possible motivation. web and the motivation of it and you're trying to guess that and you have two times within a game to to guess this feels much more like a party game than mysterium oh absolutely because because it mysterium is so very abstract and this is a little more straightforward a lot more straightforward and and quite a bit it's got of more structure to it structure yeah that's a good way of it i liked mysterium okay i know we like obscurio better but uh this is cute fun and can play with just about anybody and the little easier to unpack than the abstractness of a Mysterium. Bus, old game from Splatter, redone from Capstone. Um, gorgeous looking production. It's, again, a heavy, noted as a heavy game, but it's not really super heavy. Yeah, talk Play, about Play, put color, I love the little things, people. And he put player color baggies in here. The uh, rules look like a bus map. The, just all the extra touches help bring the this old game back to life. Really. I have not played this in 15 years, probably. Mm. It's been a long time since I played it. I don't even know how they've changed it. But again, so many games. This is one we'll have to play That's at some great. point. Haven't touched it. Babylonia, we did not play on the live stream, but we've played it a couple times now. This is a Reiner Knizia game that was released from Luda Nova. Luda Nova also did... Yukon Airways, Airways yeah. which we don't have anymore, but it was, uh, it was also at the show and a great game everyone should check out. This is pretty bland looking board, like there's nothing super uh, special about the way it looks, which is um, not a great thing for the game. I mean, it's very dry. Uh, this is the worst part. Well, yeah. I'm just going to point is. this out because this, there's a cool concept here that didn't work out as well as you wanted it to because you're supposed to put these little <laughs> things in these trays. They kind of work. And they kind of work. But they do that. Until that, that happens. Yeah. And they almost need to make them thicker so they stayed up it's like better. like a little thicker. The lines in there are a little thinner. But the idea here is really interesting. Yeah. You're, it's area control. You're trying to place your discs onto very specific areas in order to gain points and use special abilities from temples that you can unlock. 
Uh, it's very spatial. It's a very mm -hmm. spatial game which you're trying to collect victory points from the, from the tiles or those little discs that you place. Cool in concept, but again, I think that if you're going to have a Reiner Canizia game uh, and a game like this, it's mm -hmm. in today's modern world, it needs to stick out a little bit more. Maybe some people like that, but I think it needs to look better. I'm going to keep better. trying to pick up this game, and I can't because it is freaking heavy. Oh, gosh, I got it. Okay. Ugh. Yeah. So this was also huge I at the show. I was not making that up. So this is also from Daniel Tassini. Um, this is Trismegistus. Um, and we did a first look on this one. We played this a couple times now. This is one of the heavier games that I have played in quite some time. When I say heavy, it is very heavy. It's not super hard to understand how to play the game, but there's so many moving pieces in this that it can become very confusing on how to mix formulas, how to get points, how to transform those into mm -hmm. uh, victory points. A lot of things going on. I think that people are either gonna love it or they're gonna be, uh, yeah, yeah. They're gonna be pulled away from the uh, difficulty curve. I'm gonna rewind to Babylonia for a second. Somebody's calling us out for throwing shade at Canizia. That's not at all what just happened. No, not We're shade at Canizia at all. At the production of that yeah. game. Yeah, like the we, look of the game. Especially when you look at the other Luda Nova games. It just, yeah, compared to Yukon Airways. Yeah, the, the production didn't quite meet our expectations against the type of game we were expecting inside the box. The game is good. The look of the game is not very exciting. It's not, doesn't draw you in uh, as much as say, like a Yukon Airways with all the fun little things it had to offer. So Trismegistus, is yeah. that a game that you would play? No, I mean, like, <laughs> honestly, there's so much about it that's really neat. Yeah. Uh, the, the alchemy thing and what you're doing in the game is really cool, but it burned my freaking brain. Yeah. And so uh, it's not, clearly not a game for Kira, although I know lots of people that love it and will continue to love it, and I would highly recommend it if you like this kind of game. I love heavy games, but this one uh, worked my brain in ways that I can't quite, um, couldn't quite make it fun. Like, it wasn't fun. The process of it was too burny. Like, I, I just couldn't get around some of the concepts on how to score victory points. I was like, and also, there's one of the things about this game, too, is that there's a lot of games uh, that I would classify as uh, immediate feedback. There's a, there's a feedback loop in some games mm -hmm. where you do something, you place a piece on the board, and then you immediately get something in return. You place it in your reserve, you put it in your supply, you build something, and it's, it's that immediate feedback loop. This is a game that doesn't have an immediate feedback loop, and that may be one of the issues for me. That you have to do something which a turn later could do something else, which a turn later could do something else, ultimately trying to get this thing to trigger. And that's going to be the confusion for some people because there's a lot of steps that go into doing what you need to do. It doesn't make the game bad by any no. means. It just makes it more difficult ride for there's some people. There's a lot to think about. And like just trying to keep track of this little track here, well, which things can be moved into what and making sure that you're unlocking things here and up here. Dropping the right dice. Yeah. yeah. And the way the, dra I mean, that's one of the coolest things about this is how the dice drafting works and all the different options that you have when you do that mm -hmm. and how that's going to affect the alchemy that you're doing. So there's a lot of here that's really neat. And like I said, Overall, I was excited to play this game, and even after playing it, I was like, that was cool. I don't think I can go through that again, though, because yeah, it you, just isn't my normal type of game. If you guys have played this or any other games we mentioned, let us know your thoughts and if we're wrong or not wrong. or. Well, what. we've heard a couple of people kind of come back at us about that one and say that maybe, but I, I would be willing to probably try it one more time, but I just know me. This game, however, let's go here. Yeah, so this is Glenmore 2. It's finally shipping to backers. Uh, I picked up, a, we both picked up a whole bunch of other things at the show. Um, These metal coins. Metal coins, some new, a new chapter, some new tiles that uh, I didn't get with the Kickstarter. I don't think you got Mine, with your Kickstarter. My stuff's coming with the Kickstarter. You didn't get the Kickstarter. Yeah. You got a, the you basic got a new version. versus Meeple copy. So this is your... Um, Those are your workers. Workers with stickers on them. Uh, it took me cool. hours to sticker all these. Like, yes. Literally I'm going to hours. hire him to sticker mine when it arrives, it or was... my husband, because they're both very particular. Yeah. So if you've not played Glenmore um, before, it's basically it's a giant rondelle where you're moving your guys around this thing here, and on here you're going to have tiles, and as you move, you can move as far on this as you wish, and there'll be tires on each of these areas. But when you do, everyone behind you can just move one space at a time until you pass. So the furthest person back is going to be able to take more actions until they pass the people on the mm -hmm. front which can be a detriment, but also can allow you to skip really far up to get the tiles that you need. And you're gonna be building those tiles in front of you 
um, kind of Carcassonne style um, in order to do very specific actions and move your guys around in order to trigger those. This is a fantastic game. Like Glenn Moore has been a staple for a long time in a lot of people's collection. It's really nice to see them uh, re-release uh, the style of the game, but also add all these different chapters because in each of these different chapters, they add new mechanisms. So if you want to, you can add all these different mechanisms into one game and play with everything that the game has to offer. However, uh, it's going to add a substantial amount of time to the the base. Uh, oh, yeah, I know. You had this in here it's now. it's crazy. So hold on, whoa, whoa, whoa. let's put oh. this let's put this in. It's gorgeous. And then put yeah, that the in. Yeah, production is really nice. And then we'll put this in. Is that not? Is it kind of floaty? Because it it is kind. You know, I mean, it just. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like production isn't important to me. I like the way games look. I like when the things don't look like they're gonna fall it's apart. It's kind of overflowing. Yes, that, that is overflowing. I need I need to fix that need so I don't that. bust the box open. That would drive me nuts. I Jeremy Howard just said he's never played Glenmore. Jeremy, oh my gosh, what yeah, the heck, Yeah, you gotta dude? play Glenmore. I hadn't played it either. We played it for uh, the live stream, and I played it uh, several times, and I fell in love with it very quickly. This is when so you have so people are probably it. looking at this going, why is Guilds of London on the screen? Uh, so this is a. You're actually wondering this, why our hands are reversed because I put us on the wrong side. This of the is uh, was my number ten game of 2017, I believe, and a lot of people had issues with this game um, for one of the mechanisms that was used within the game, and that's placing one of the meeples and basically messing with other people. Uh, so you may be asking why I have this game up here. That's because this is now out. Yay. This is the Wards of London, which is the expansion for it. And a lot of people said, get rid of your Guilds of London. I don't like it. No one wants want to play with you anymore. Well, this one changes the game fundamentally for the better, I think, because it allows you Sorry, to this build. Does or this does? This adds to this. <laughs> this changes it fundamentally for the better, because now you have the opportunity to build your own little uh, area in front of you that people can't mess with. And you're going to have areas between you and the other players that you can both kind of mess with. So you, if you want to, you can kind of just build your own ward off to the side and do whatever you want to do, and that's perfectly fine. And, but you do have the ability to mess with other people now uh, with the tiles. A whole bunch of new tiles, a whole new way to even build the board. No longer are you building that, com that communal board in the center. Now you're building your own little area off to the side. Uh, so each player is gonna have their own little uh, specific area. If you liked Guilds of London, I really liked the base game. Um, and I understand why people didn't like it because of all the take that in there. Um, so just giving it I a like try. I like take that. I do I too, like but that mean. I would agree. That game can really, really um, hmm. uh, be disheartening for people. Wow. Well, yeah. All right, okay, next game. Sanctum. Oh my gosh. So we've not played this. Um, also known as Diablo. It does look like Diablo. <laughs> I mean, this is about as blatant as a ripoff of Diablo as you can imagine. It looks just like Diablo. Yeah. If this had said Diablo 4 on it, I think people would have been drawn to it just because of the announcement with Diablo I think they're 4. drawn to it because th that looks like Diablo. Mm -hmm. It just does. So this looks very, very cool. Basically, you are trying to go through multiple different uh, steps or um, adventures in order to get to the main boss. Each of these steps is going to have creatures. The creatures like are double-sided. Uh, the double sided means when you kill them, you're going to get some kind of weapon. But what I didn't know about this game, and I don't think they did a really good job of advertising this game prior to Spiel, enjoy dinner, was Paul. that there was a lot of, um, well, what did you say? I said enjoy dinner, Paul. Oh, there is a lot of upgrading in this game. So you're upgrading your character, and they're using all these different skills by manipulating different tracks on your board in order to get abilities. They're using stamina in order to do power specific abilities and all these things are going to trigger on your player board depending upon how you manage that thing ultimately trying to get to the end boss i don't know uh, how the game plays or the longevity of the game uh, but i'm hoping that um, it's good past a single play yep and you got it signed by the designer yeah who was there which was great and yeah. i believe we're cool. going to have uh, tony from cg come play this with us yeah. so here's a look at the layout which I it's think a beautiful looking game better than me trying to get all the pieces out with the stream being as long as it is so far how far are we at we Ooh. are i don't know almost two hours in now well no what when did we start almost eight yeah we're an hour in okay well we're we've doing got pretty good we've got maybe 12 more games pick one all right i we, have no more on this side you, you have, have no more rest. all right so this is the third game from the spanish company and i want to say it's uh, what did I, I can't even pronounce it. Primogenio. 
uh, ediaciones primogenio. Yes. Something like that. Anyway, this is Ratville. And Miko. This was, this is not Miko. Yes, it is. That's not Miko. I'm pretty sure it is. No way that's Miko. I had people saying so on Instagram when I posted pictures. No, that's not oh, Miko. Oh, it's not? Well, it no. looks very Miko. All right, so this uh, is a very cool game. It's a little bit long. We played about two hours for four players. Am I right? Really? Was it's it long. two hours? I don't know. It was there was it a not? point where it, it says just a 60 tiny minutes. Bit. Maybe we're just playing. I with think it was just people because, that take forever. Yes. Okay. Well, that may we be the case. We have some APers in our little group. Sometimes. It's very, very cool. Everyone has the same yeah. set of cards in I their like hand, and you are rolling dice, and you're slotting those dice on your player boards. There you go. So here is your player board, and you're going to slot the dice, the four dice that you roll, anywhere on this player board, and then you're going to take four cards and put them directly below those dice. These cards that you have in your hand have different powers and are going to affect what you do according to the die that's above it. So, but when you place them, they're all going to be placed face down. And then at the same time, you're going to announce to the table who has the number one. So everyone has number one is going to flip it over and then do that action according to whatever die they have above it. And they're going to say who has two. And you're going to keep doing that around the table. Ultimately, what you're trying to do is score population, which is mm -hmm. the people that you can bring into your community. And there's a population board off to the side that you're going to use. But in doing so, you're also going to be able to build these little gadgets, which are going to sit off to the side. You're going to build buildings that are going to go oh, here, all augmenting what you're doing buildings. during the course of the game. Again, all these cards that you have are going to be able to do certain things. So if you have a reveal the builder, you can build one of the cards, but according to the die that you rolled. So if you rolled a low die, you can only roll, uh, build the low buildings, but you need the resources. In order to get the resources, you have to send out your person that can gather resources. And to gather resources, there's a card in the center that's going to have a bunch of resources in on it. And de determined by the dice, if you have the highest die with that guy who collects resources, you get to pick first. There's a lot of things that you need to consider. It's a super fun little game. Uh, it's called Ratville. Um, it's been a lot. Okay, I just have to say this. Yeah. There are a lot of games with rat in them right now. <laughs> I, I was just saying this like earlier this year. There was a, a bunch of coma games for some reason. Yeah. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I noticed there were a lot of games that had coma themes. Now there's a lot of games that have rat themes. So we saw this one. We saw Rat Pizza, which is like rat. Ratia. Like, yeah, they're making pizza. And we saw a couple other ones at the show that I can't think of what the names of them were now, but they had rat in the name. So it's a thing. Rats are a thing. I super enjoy this game. I liked it a lot. This is uh, this is very cool. I would highly suggest if you know anyone that has this uh, to try it um, before you buy it. But this is one that uh, I think I will keep. Absolutely. Because I like it. So suitcases bit. wise, how many did we bring back? Three? Um, two big ones. Two push. giant filled suitcases and then... We kind of like a third. No, we had three, and then I had some in my yeah. other one, so four ish. Yeah, one one of the checked bags was just all my crap. Yeah. And then, yes. So we did pretty good. Some of these things we had before the show. So Wayfinders, Panasaurus Games. This is a really cute little game where you're going around, uh, flying around these different locations and uh, fueling up and mm -hmm. gaining resources and ultimately. Trying to be the first person that does all the things. It's a it's a super, it's super variable because mm -hmm. all these tiles are going to be placed in different ways. It's super colorful. You're using your meeples to go on this track in order to pull resources that can help you fuel uh, your plane to go to different areas. Really cool game. It's very pretty. Yeah. Very pretty. Pirates Under Fire. Um, this looks interesting, and I have not played this yet, but. This is going to, so there's these tiles here and you have a, it's a two player game and you have tiles on one side and tiles on the other. So you place that between the two players and basically you are, have a stack of tiles that you're going to place on top of these areas. The ships themselves are going to do something plus the area that you lay on. Ultimately, you're trying to get rows and columns with numbers that go in sequences or the same type, mm -hmm. but you're constantly shooting across at the other player. Uh, very fast playing too. Uh, it's 30, 30 minutes for two players. Hmm. Try that one out. What else you got over there? What else do I have over here? All right. We'll, so we have people asking what our top five is. We'll, we'll wrap up at the end once we get through all these to tell you what our top five of what we've played so far is because we haven't played all of these yet. But 
We have played Paladins. Yep. This is MVM approved back when we got the Kickstarter preview for yep. this. And it finally came out, and I'm just waiting for my Kickstarter copy personally. But, oh. It's good. It's, it's, this is, it's this great. Is, this is the best shim game, I think. Yeah. Um, this and Raiders of the North Sea, but this one is, is in my opinion, a better yeah, game. Yeah, just great. A lot of, lot of avenues, a lot of things. Well, it's it's the metal coins in there. Oh. Shim and his metal coins. Thank you, Shem, for being <laughs> someone who understands and appreciates metal coins. So everyone should play this. You like worker placement, play this game. Yep, agreed. Skytopia? Uh, oh, this... this is getting perilous over here. I know. I'm Stuff's worried. tipping over. So Skytopia, we also played at the Cosmodrome booth. Uh, this is a uh, draft. No, there's nothing on the back side. It's going to be hard. Anyway, this time board here is going to allow you to that trigger. Was cool. Yeah. So these this is going to turn every round. And when it hits a certain area, it's going to trigger all the dice of that particular number. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is you're taking your dice and you're placing it on one of the cards in a particular row. If you played Lorenzo and Magnifico, you know those four columns where you're placing things. Uh, it works very similar to that. You're going to have four columns and you're taking your dice and you're placing on there, hedging a bet on when that thing is going to move up. They always move one space at a time. However, people can sneak in with maybe a three, which means that three is gonna hit before your six hit. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to gauge on when that particular thing will trigger. Um, but if you- You have this little player board that has the things you're slotting everything into too, and you're gonna be able to trigger things because of other things happening. And... All the cards do something mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. all, they all score in very different ways. Uh, so that's Skytopia. Uh, I love this game. This is the remake oh, yeah. of Ghost Stories from Anton Bauza and Repos. Um, mm -hmm. If you've played Ghost Stories and you've played, you understand this game, just adds some little nuances, adds uh, some additional difficulty and some additional things that you can use on the board. It's a really fun game in which you're just trying to defend a castle from an onslaught of monsters and just when you think you've got it won, bad things start happening everywhere. Yeah, and you're, you know, you're putting out, you're having to decide where you're going to put your guys based on the if they fill up anyway, and you die really fast, and little skull things come out and ruin your day. Like, yeah, there's a lot of ways to not win this game. A lot. But I love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, Got our this, butts kicked. so Ghost Stories uh, has always hold, held a special place in my heart. This one is the same way. It's infinitely difficult. I think uh, the win percentage for me has been like 20% uh, whenever I try playing this game. We have yet to win Last Bastion. I've won Ghost no. Stories a handful of times, but no. not ba Last Bastion. What you got over there? I've still got nothing. Yeah, um, Paris No Eden. Did we do a review of this? I think David and I did do a review of this. Did we not? No, you're thinking of City of Lights. No, I think we did this too. Did we not? No. I don't hmm. think so. Okay. Maybe we didn't. I don't remember. Maybe you should, though, because it's kind of a neat game. It is. This is also a Matago game. It's super pretty. I don't even know how to explain this. There's a lot of stuff going on here. You have, uh, so you're trying to rebuild the population. Uh, you have of all Paris. these, yeah, of all these different action spots on your board. Can people even see that? Maybe. Maybe we should take out the board because it's so pretty. Yes. It's super pretty. Yeah, look at this board. I mean, gorgeous. Oh my gosh, tiles everywhere. Oh, man. That's never good. Yeah, I love that there's a place for everything in that box, but it's not a box you can put on its side. All right, I'm going to do this while you... Okay, so you've got some areas over here where you're going to get these tiles, and they're going to... Uh, you're going to have the opportunity to come over here, one, gain the first player token, and then choose which one to flip over and say, this one's out. So you're only going to score one of the three things that show up here. Yeah, there's tiles here that you'll score every round. You have a bridge, which are like in-game points. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a place to gain Four some of the points. different uh, people. And there's people that come in uh, different uh, types. And you'll be collecting them as either dice or as tokens. And you're going to be using those in order to gather specific buildings in your tableau. Mm -hmm. And the whole goal of it is to gain population. The more population you have, the more points you're going to score, but also the more you have to feed your people at the end of each round. It's a very simple game, but it's also uh, got a lot of, again, a lot of nuance that you have to pay attention to when you play it. I liked it a lot. It's cool. It's cool. I don't know if it's uh, a game that I will keep. But uh, it's, it's one that I at least want to play again because uh, I got to understand what we were doing. Whoops, whack myself in the face of the board. But I, it's not one that, I don't know if it's one that I would keep or not. I know that I want to play it at least one more time to see what I think of it. Well, there you go. I play liked what I had when we played it. All right. Sarah's Vision. 
This was made by an insurance company. That's one of the most interesting things about this game. Yeah. I, I don't know I, anything else about it. I right don't know now. anything other than you stack stuff up via Jenga tiles. They what? sent it to us. Yeah, all these things get stacked oh, up via, via Jenga tiles. And I'm not sure what you're trying to do, but I know it's a cooperative game that you are working together. Looks mildly I'd like to hear how their Essen was because I bet it was pretty interesting. Different, different you environment should, from them. You should check out their trailer video. Oh. It looked like a uh, like a corporate recruiting video. It's oh, pretty funny. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's pretty funny. Definitely looking forward to I know we've all talked about this one, so it's we'll pretty. be getting it like, to the table The game soon, is I'm super sure. pretty. All right, so I've got a handful of games here. I'm going to bring a couple of them out. Uh, oh, Azul. man, I don't even know where to put stuff. Just stack it. Stack I'm doing it to my the best. All right, our review of Azul Summer Pavilion is mm -hmm. out already. Uh, this, in my opinion, is my favorite game uh, of theirs. I don't own either of the other ones. The second one I thought um, was not super intriguing for me. The first one was a good game, um, but I played it a lot when it came out to the point where I didn't need it. Mm. Uh, the really cool thing about this one, which you'll see in our review, is that it has a lot of combos. The ability to pull off combos make this game uh, incredibly unique in comparison to the other two. It's still a tile play placement game. It's still a game you're gonna be drafting tiles in the very same and similar fashion to the original game. However, when you place them on your board, uh, depending on different things that you surround on your board, you're able to combo, meaning that you're going to pull from a communal board more tiles to put into your pool to immediately be able to be used on that round. So that sense of doing something that does something that does something again has this chain reaction is super mm -hmm. fun and very unique to this uh, version of Azul. I really like this one. I didn't play it. Oh, you haven't played this? You guys played it. Oh, I thought you played this with us. No, I was. I think I had had a meeting. All right. But you guys were playing it, and I took some pictures because it was pretty. Okay, I have three more games. Yeah, I don't know. Azul's never really hit a whole lot of notes for me. So this one is Maracaibo. Uh, it is uh, Alexander Pfister's other game that came out at um, Spiel. Mm. The first one, of course, was Expedition to Newdale. Uh, we waited for quite some time to do the demo of this because we knew that we didn't want to walk away from the convention and not played it. Uh, the demo um, was 50 minutes. And it was a good no, I, demo. And I don't mean the demo itself. I meant the teach. The teach was 50 minutes by a concise and very well-versed teacher. Yes, she, she was amazing. She did a great job. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have interruptions. We were all patiently excited to get started. And she did, I mean, it just, there's a lot to know. Yeah, so this is truly a mixture of a lot of Fister's previous games. It's got some Great Western Trail on it. It's got some Mombasa on it. It's even got some Blackout Hong Kong in it. There's a lot of things to consider in this game, but having played it that initial time, I fell in love with it. Quick. There's, It is super quick once you play it, and there's a lot of things that you can score points for and a lot of different variety in the ways that you can score those points. This is a point salad game um, to the core. Love but it. there's a lot of mechanisms that you have to overcome and understand. Once that teach was done, though, it did go really it fast. It was super quick, and uh, we didn't finish it because, obviously, yeah. it, we didn't want to take up the spot for too long, and we all got the understanding we needed of the game, but I cannot wait to get it to the table again. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it is definitely feels like one I'm going to be having in my top list for the end of the year. And the other thing is that there is a legacy, I don't want to say legacy, but there is a campaign element to it that allows you to place things over the board in order to mm -hmm. change actions yeah. fundamentally from right. what they do from one game to the next. So there's like a tile and it'll say, hey, bring out the tile whatever, and yep. you put it over the board. Yep, and there's a whole space in the back of the game that will explain how all those different things work. Plus there is a solo variant for all you solo players that want to play a super heavy uh, Euro game uh, from Fister. So you can do that as well. All right, two more games. Also capstone games. Go get them, Clay. Uh, this is Orleans Stories. I have just finished the rules. I am slightly concerned for this game, only in the fact that uh, there is a heavy amount of uh, player interaction in this compared to the regular Orleans. In fact, you can send knights out to disrupt other players' actions in the game, even remove them from their board. There is a peace agreement in the game that you're allowed to have where you don't interact with other players. Um, I'm not sure, I haven't got to how that, that is boring. enacted. What? A peace? peace agreement. Well, for Orleans, the great thing about Orleans is it is uh, mostly a, a, uh, a very heavy um, 
solo game. Like okay. you're, you're playing the game by yourself. You're doing your own thing sure. and other pe people are doing their own thing. It's still a bag building game. As you can see, it's a giant game. It is its own game. It doesn't need the original Orleans. It plays by itself. It has multiple stories in it and each of these stories is represented by a book which is going to basically tell you how to play the game. You can see there's a whole Ooh, slew look at of all books. Those books. The one thing Did that I found read? out in the rules is that there is a huge amount of variety in the way that the game is played from one of the stories to the next. Meaning you can have different buildings, different actions you can take, different ways the game interacts with the components. Uh, so I'm super intrigued by this. Plus, there is an immense amount of components in this. Uh, the other thing is that this me. isn't a game where you're going to be moving around from space to space. You're actually building out the board with territories, which are represented by these little discs that you see here. The board itself is just a giant... Uh, do I have that available? I don't, but it's probably on the back. Yeah. And my rule book is upstairs because I've been reading I'm through the rules. I flipped through those little books. Yeah. There's lots to read, so I'm so, excited. So these are all empty hexes at the start of the game. It's just a big board full of empty hexes. And you're mm. going to be placing these tiles on here, which represent like meadows and forests and villages and, and stuff on the board. There is a lot of different other tiles um, that you're going to be placing things on as well and introducing new things. You can see here's the two first, the first two stories, the first kingdom and the king's favor, but there's multiple stories in there as well that you can play. Ella just noted, and I know we felt the same pain, getting this back yeah. was interesting. Yeah. It was it was immense. I mean, it's a it's a big box. This is the biggest. Started to worry about the weight of our suitcases. Yeah, this is the biggest box I think I brought back, minus the last one that I'm going to show Flick here. Face, Flick of Faith was the most awkward shaped box. This is yeah. the biggest box. All right, so oh, this is that the, was the heaviest. Box. Yeah, this is the last one. Uh, I spent 120 euros on this one. Some of these too. And I'm excited to try this. I love civilization games. This is a game that was kickstarted. It's from a company called BBG. Uh, I bought everything for this, and including they were from BGG. Yeah, not to get that confused. Including all the this. Uh, this the wooden pieces, unbelievable. Uh, the Look rules, at these sorting things, and it there. all stayed in place. You notice how all the other games were falling apart? Everything yeah. stayed in place. It's pretty cool. So everything kind of just slots in this in this box. The map and everything. I'm gonna take the map out because this is this a is very, very pretty cool. game. This There's another. The only bad problem uh, with this is that there is another map that doesn't fit in this box, and it uses the tiles from here because you can build a board that is um, oh, completely please. modular. It, it's not the same one that you're going to see here. This board is also massive, but when I look at this, I just think yes. Yes. This is pretty. Oh wow. This is. We haven't really looked at this yet. Oh, you haven't seen this? I saw this. I saw it all put together when you got done putting this together. I mean, I look at look at all at this game. stuff and all these Ooh. nodes out here and all this, like mm. morale track up in this area up here. Ooh. Tracks up there. What's this thing? I don't know. Oh, there's so much going on here. I have no idea, but I'm super excited for this one. This <laughs> one's called Era of Tribes. It is a uh, Civ game. It weighs um, like 30 pounds. It is it immensely heavy because it's got metal coins in it. It's got a ton it's, of wood. It's a good 10 every, pounds. Every one of these is its own uh, unique player. So you have uh, your own compartment for a player. Like this is all the blue stuff ooh, here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then there's trays under here. There's wooden pieces. There's more counters down there. There's dice Pretty. down there. Um, and I bought this on just pure stance that I would like it. I have really no idea how the game plays. But it's got an immense rule book as well. We're talking, talk about dents. Oh. See, this isn't a this isn't a pretty rule book either. That's normally not a rule book you get excited about. The, you know, there's so many page. They didn't even put page numbers on here because they probably didn't want people to be scared. Is there page numbers? Oh, there is. Woos are hidden. 30, <laughs> 30 pages of rules with that this awful thing on the back. Oh God. Right. Mm, well, luckily BGG and people are are clever and they come up with their own versions of things. So I need I need good. Rodney to do a watch it played so yes. I just can watch it and not worry about reading the rules. So, so turn let's on the main. Go to, All yeah. right. Do we have any questions from anybody? Uh, is it a worker placement game? Uh, I don't know. I I honestly do not know. If I can even flip this thing over because it's so heavy. Um. Play one of ten unique tribes. Ten. Ten tribes. Settle and research. Keep an eye on your morale. Influence your battle dice. Mm, battle dice. That's battle dice. 
Is it available in retail? Who knows? I I don't know, but you can order it from their website. Uh, I honestly just sent him money via PayPal. I don't know. PayPal. Was this one of those ones that uh, maybe showed up on the Mule service that'll be at BGG or might be? A uh, check out the uh, the Fun Again website for their Mule service, and they brought back a lot of good games. So definitely be checking those out. Oh, so people want to know our top five favorite games. Just leave it up here. Oh yeah, it's I just heavy. don't even. This wanna... shouldn't sit on anymore. It's, we have stuff literally everywhere. Any of these deranged? Uh, Drains isn't coming out to retail oh, until next right. year. That's right. Okay. Got pushed. That's right. By your, by American. So, uh, American company is bringing it over. Cool. So, I mean, I don't know. We played, as far as things we played. Mm -hmm. I mean, Maracaibo, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, Crystal Palace, obviously. Mm -hmm. I loved Newdale. Um, what else did we? Pl what else have we played? Well, like. You like the Magnificent quite a bit. I love the Magnificent. I like obviously them. love Flick of Faith. So there's five, but those are the first five that come to mind. I know there's more. I loved Terramara. It's fantastic. Marvel Champions is obviously one of our top games of the year, if not the top game of the year for both of us. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of great games. So I, I don't know if I can pick a top, top five from the show. We had Marvel before. We had Crystal Palace before. So I'd say from the show, Maracaibo for sure mm -hmm. um, was up there for me. And so was New Dale. And um, so was Marco Polo, too. Yeah, I'm trying to look through all these games. I don't, I mean, obviously go with the games that uh, excite you're, you the most. Away. But if I were to pick games that I think that people should obviously try out, Marco Polo 2, I think, is mm -hmm. a substantial, um, it's a substantial game just in and of itself. It's a great <gasps> midway Euro game that I think most everybody is going to enjoy. If you like Marco Polo or even on the fence about Mar Marco Polo, you enjoy that type of mechanism, I think this is a good buy. Uh, obviously, Marvel Champions is, is probably going to be my one or two game this year. It's it's a really really good Followed by game. Like Watergate and then Crystal Palace. Yeah, all of those. Crystal Palace is also fantastic. Uh, there's a lot of games that I you know want what we to. We don't have is Ma Masters of the Renaissance. People are asking about. Yeah. We did play that. I'm sorry David we don't it. have it out. Dave, David's borrowing yep. it. Li we liked it. It's good. Yeah. It's good. It's a little bit a little too light for me. Like I, if I'm going to play one of the two Lorenzo games, I will stick with. Lorenzo El Magnifico. And I've only played Masters, so... And you I mean, beat me, so that probably put it... It makes it one of my favorite games of all time, clearly. As far as games that I'm excited to try, uh, Air of Tribes, mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to. Uh, playing uh, a couple more games of Maracaibo. I'm honestly interested in finishing out the Expedition of Newdale. Um, the first two games were on the same map. The third game, though, is going to introduce a new map with new worker placement spots, a bunch of new cards. And I honestly, I like the Oh My Goods formula. I think it's a very fun system. Uh, other games that I'm interested in trying, I want to try the Hadar expansions because mm -hmm. uh, I haven't done that I yet. Uh, Underwater Cities expansion because I'm so on the fence on whether or not. I love Underwater Cities as a game. I love the way that the game plays. Again, um, I, I've argued with a bunch of people about this. I felt like the kelp strategy was really strong, and I've never steered away from it, and I've never lost using the kelp strategy. So I want to see if the game has introduced en enough new components and enough new strategies to make other things more viable. If it does, um, I can see that game skyrocketing up in my top games of all time. I really mm -hmm. like the system, but that was a nuance for me that I didn't enjoy. I'm excited to play Low Memory. Yeah. We are definitely going to be playing that. I'm super curious about Sarah's vision because, I mean, there's just so much to unpack there. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I don't know. I mean, like, I'm excited about a lot of this stuff. I am, uh, unfortunately, uh, was disappointed that the new unlock, which was available at Spiel, was only, only available in German. In, yeah, in German. So that was a huge bummer. We walked that show floor everywhere and was told from Asmodee at two different places to go, go to, to one. Hall 3, go to Hall 1. Go to Hall 1. And we three, couldn't find the English edition, but there is a new English, or there's a new unlock that was available there that looked super cool. We think it comes out sometime this month. I don't Maybe. know. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Asmodee, get it, get get us a date. We want this unlock. <laughs> yeah, unlock's cool. Uh, anything else? Any other questions from uh, anybody? Let's see. We've got. How did you like Barrage? Uh, Barrage is just okay for me. Um, again, that falls in the same kind of uh, bucket as uh, Trismegistus, where I don't feel like there's an immediate feedback loop, especially with the the dial that, that moves around. You're putting something on that dial. And then you have to wait several rounds for that thing to come back so you get those resources back. 
which was kind of a bummer for me. Plus, I feel like it's a little more complicated than what it needed to be. Um, so we have a bunch okay. of people asking about tap tapestry, mm -hmm. and it wasn't an Essen release, so that's why we're not talking about it. It's they're asking us because we had so much hype for it on the channel. And it's a good game. We like it, but it wasn't an Essen release, and so it's not. It's the main reason why we aren't talking about it yeah. during this. I know it was there for people at Essen, but it actually released for us here prior, like two months prior to Essen. Yeah. So for us, it's been out for a while. So we were focusing just on Essen stuff mm -hmm. that was Essen for us, uh, releases for us. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's a good game. There's a bunch of other games that we didn't pick up, uh, either because we didn't have room or... Mystery House. They saw, uh, yeah, I love Mystery House, but we got that at Gen Con. Yeah. Mystery House came out at Gen Con in uh, very limited quantities, and we burnt through both of the different uh, scenarios in there. Love the game. Like, I'm, I'm really drawn to any of those Unlock style games, and that one does it really yeah, well. Yeah, it says it's an SN release according to BGG, but there were a lot of games that you can... It was at Gen Con, for Anything sure. that was going to be for sale there. Mm -hmm. So, sh sure, just even Tapestry, like... Not everything that was on the list mm -hmm. was brand new. It right. was maybe going to be sold at Essen. I think they make it like a six month window. So I know it can be a little confusing sometimes, but it was, I guess it was released to other countries maybe mm -hmm. at Essen, but for us, it had already been out for a while. So sorry about that guys. That's why we aren't getting into it. Yeah, there's a couple other games too that we weren't able to pick up. One of them was Formosa T, which is sold mm -hmm. out really quick that I wanted to try. Uh, Nova Luna, uh, oh, yeah. which looked pretty cool. That'll um, be here soon. I wanted to try out the Sloth game, Fast Sloth. Fast Sloths. That yeah, was free. That looked really freeze. That looked really neat. Um, what else? New uh, turmoil. Like that, yeah, uh, Pax Transhumanity. Oh, I yeah. wanted to try, and that was sold out. Uh, there was that was that King game we didn't get a chance to sit down and play. The King's Bard or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that looked neat. And then, of course, Tainted Grail, which didn't really come out there, but it's coming out very soon. So I consider that kind of a spielish game. Sure. I mean, it wasn't really, it wasn't for mm -hmm. sale there. They had Nemesis. They had the, the Space Cat. And there are so many. I mean, there's what you saw today was like 50 games. Like, there's over a thousand games there that were newish. Uh, so we tried to pick the ones that would appeal most to us as a gaming group. Um, and try to get those played and maybe, you know, focus mm -hmm. on those over the next couple months. We did get a chance to play The Great Wall. Uh, somebody yeah. brought it up on here. And it's yeah. obviously going to, it wasn't out. It was a prototype. It's going to be coming to Kickstarter at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a very interesting worker placement game. Still in development, very Still in much. development, yeah. But it, intriguing for sure. Mm -hmm. um, as far as that goes, and then, I mean, there were some fun surprises that we can't even talk about. I got to see So You've Been Eaten, which wasn't actually releasing this, and I thought it was, but mm -hmm. it's going to be coming to a Kickstarter. So that's a Scott Alms with Quan Chai art that looks awesome, and it was super intriguing and the zero yeah. player mode and all that. So, um, but yeah, I think we mostly just focused here on things. Uh, Alibari, somebody brought that up. We talked about it earlier. Um, great game. As yeah. far as I know, I didn't get a chance to play it yet, but the guys liked it at higher player counts. Any so, disappointments? Any disappointments? Well, the unlock not being there. Yeah, that was, was a big disappointment. I really wish it was there. Couldn't get that Obi Wan either. Uh, yeah. There was a. Um, no, I mean it was it was fun. It, like I said, this is my first time going to Spiel. I was unaware of how large the show was. Uh, it's a it's immense. There's there's literally booths everywhere. There's halls everywhere. There's nooks and crannies everywhere. Uh, we walked for five days straight, um, <laughs> and I still don't feel like I saw everything. No. And the other one of the unique things too is that there's a, you know, we focus so much on the cult of the new, all the new games that you saw here. For every new game that we saw being purchased from someone, we saw a hundred games that have been two, three, four, five, ten years older that people had in their hands taking from the convention, which only told me how healthy the industry is as a whole. That a lot of people are picking up games that we played years ago. And, and they're it might just, just now being they're just coming out yeah. of there too, or well, because they're the, being introduced to the hobby. The hype train thing isn't isn't the same, which is for great. Everybody that and, goes and to I, these shows, and I love that. I loved watching people with copies of Grand Austria Hotel under their arm. Like those type of things were really fun to watch. How would you say that this? And I know this is your first spiel as as far as attending, but you've obviously played plenty of games that have come out of spiel in years past. How would you say this year compared to previous years? Uh, this has been one of the best years for games. Yeah, in, in a little while. I think while. we said the same thing about Gen Con. There was. Uh, 
just 2019 as a whole has had a, mm -hmm. an immense amount of really, really solid games. It's going to be hard to pare down a top 10, which a top 10, again, is just my opinion about what I think are good games. But in general, this is going to be one of the harder years to pare down and figure out what's good and what I oh, yeah. want to keep. Uh, next legacy style game we're all, well, that we're all excited about. Uh, Tainted, Tainted Grail. Grail. <laughs> uh, Tainted Grail is going to be huge. Sleeping Gods, I think, mm -hmm. will be really, really fun. He changed. Did you read the designer diary of the changes he made to the boat structure? So oh, he, no. he changed some things in Sleeping Gods that I think are for the best. Uh, that looks really, really... Uh, I mean, we played it. It looks awesome. Uh, Legacy, I don't... I mean, I know some Legacy games coming out. I can't really talk can't about them. can't talk about them yeah. yet. Uh, most Heavy Euros at Essen. Most Heavy Euros? Yeah. Tris Magistus is pretty damn heavy. Yeah. It's heavy. <laughs> yeah, it's, Maracaibo. I imagine Throne of Allegory is one of those too. Yeah. That's that's pretty heavy. Um, uh, Era of Tribes is probably oh, this one's yeah. probably going to be Super heavier. Heavy. Uh, I mean, heavy is relative to what you're used to. I mean, some games that I enjoy playing, I would consider uh, not heavy, but to other players, very heavy. Tris Magistus, I mean, people that watch this channel know like my threshold in the games I play. I play pretty much everything. I'm Omni Gamer for sure. Mm -hmm. But Tris Magistus is one that I feel like is just a little bit over um, my comfort level. And, there's, I think there's game. a median for you because like, while you do play card games, there, there's certain, there's like a level of card game that you tend to avoid and then there's a level of heavy that you... Sure, but yeah. I like games like Madeira. I like True. Vinos. I like Gal mm -hmm. uh, Gallerist. I like all those heavier games, but there's just something about Trismegistus that's really heavy. No con crud. We didn't end up with any con crud, just uh, jet None. lag. None. Um, and then, let's see. How does Terramara stack up against their other games? The uh, designers, I don't know. I mean, I've only played it against twice, three times. Yeah. Uh, it's really hard to tell. I mean, to tell. I... I I don't want to judge a game based on a couple plays, um, unless I'm super comfortable. Uh, my play was with, did you play it with me? Yeah. So I played it with you and David. It. Um, so it's really hard to gauge because I naturally gravitate towards those style of games. So I tend to, number one, I read the rules and I think you have an inherent advantage whenever you read the mm -hmm. rules. So I kind of uh, did a couple paths that really hampered their enjoyment of the game. Um, especially along the boat track. I mean, I was able to get all the way through the boat track very fast mm -hmm. from doing certain combinations. Um, there's a lot of stuff to do in that game as well. There's a lot of comboing that you can do. There's a lot of cool cards that allow you to uh, have different abilities to the game. And so people that are able to pick that out very quickly and uh, disseminate the information that's on the player on the, the game board and the cards that are below are going to be able to do really well. So that's the great thing about any of those type of games, like Grand Austria. The people that can find those combos in their head are going to do well, and Terramar has that in spades as well. Yeah. So um, there was a game, so we like Dita Vernon, right? And we like Quacks yeah. OK and all that. Mm -hmm. There was another game that we didn't catch the name of, but we saw they had another game. I don't remember that. You I keep telling me that. I don't know. It I had know, an airship on the super, front. Yeah, it had an airship. It looked super interesting. So, like, if anybody picked that up, <laughs> please tell us about it. It's from Schmidt. Know. It's, it's from, from Schmidt. Schmidt. Yeah. Um, Ella wants to know what our highlight of the show was. Not just game-wise, like overall highlight. I think I know what yours was. Yeah, mine was, uh, I mean, I went to, we walked the hall the, the Tuesday and the Wednesday before the Thursday that it opened, trying to get as many games as we could. That's one of the nice things about being in the shoes that we are. We're able to walk around before there's a million people in there. So we're going up to booths and just um, uh, just talking to people. And I saw Tony Boydell, who did Snowdonia and did Alibari. And I went up and I introduced myself to him and said, you know, I really like your games. Uh, he didn't recognize me, which is cool. Yeah. Uh, and he, uh, we just started talking back and forth. And then the guy at the booth, because uh, I was at Lookout Games and um, I was obviously wanting to get Expedition to Newdale. And the guy at the booth recognized me and um, he was like, you know, I watch your show all the time. And he said, my name is Clemens. And I was like, oh, I didn't, I didn't put two and two together. And then I just out of my brain, I was like, oh my God, is this actually Clemens Franz? Mm -hmm. Like, is this really him? And it was. And That's I was like adorable. blown away. I was, I mean, I was a kid in a candy store. I was so happy. So I had him, uh, he was nice enough to uh, give me my copy of Expedition to Newdale. And then he signed it for me, which I thought was really, really gracious of him. So that was probably my highlight meeting him. Because I've, I mean, I love Euro games. I've always loved them. And I always have a super fondness for all of those 
what people consider to be very drab box covers. I love those. I those things speak to me as a gamer, and to have him sign one of the games that he you know is doing art for was just really cool. Yeah, for me, I think it was just really. I I love getting to see people I don't normally get to see. And I got to see a couple of other media folks that um, I've never met in person yeah. uh, or it had been a while since I'd seen them. Maybe the last time I went to Essen, which was two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, it was Johannes was one of the people yeah. who I love. If you guys don't know who Johannes is, he always starts his videos with, hello, everybody. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's just he's such a happy personality. Yep. And then we also met um, Marlon yep. uh, from what's his channel? It's spacing me because I'm on the spot. I don't remember. I don't know. It's going to drive me crazy. Marlon Cruz, but you guys would know him. He's wonderful. It was great to meet him in person. And really also people that watch the channel. So we met a lot of people Yeah. because everybody recognizes you. So it was really nice just to meet people and hearing that they like what we do. So yeah, I mean, a lot of publishers too, that uh, we don't have the opportunity to meet a lot of the European publishers unless they come to Gen Con. So I got the chance to meet a lot of them that we've done work with or just, you know, that we follow um, because we like their games. So we had a chance to walk around and meet a lot of those people as well. Which El Crosso. Really His board there game channel is El there Crosso. You go. <laughs> Thank you. There it you took go. me a second. Um, favorite or best booth of the show? Um, I know which ones stick. There's a couple that stick out for me. I'll um, let you go. Uncommon. Mm -hmm. For our keys, they had a really cool setup for their upcoming Kickstarter, oh. and then yellow because mm -hmm. they had like they had the little tiny towns area, and then you went from tiny towns over here into like the Ishtar village, and then they had one more. What was the third game? The Ninja Academy one. So there was like the dojo walk in. It was really neat that they had all that. And one of my favorite things, even from mm -hmm. two years ago, that I had I, anyone around me has heard me say. I really love their yellow's whole setup because they have this like business setup as well. So they have two separate spaces and the business setup is just really cool looking. It's got a nice presence, but it's for media to go in and kind of get a preview of everything. We saw a lot of really cool games there. That was a really nice experience uh, overall. So those were some of the best booths I saw. I don't know. It's all blur. I honestly can't think of anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that little that tree game I keep talking about. The, the tree game. The, with the bunny and the beautiful tree with the uh, art. Oli and the Oli. something. Yeah. I'm going to continue to forget the name of that game, but I know I know what it looks like and I'm watching for it. The, boot, the booths were just bigger there. I mean, they were immense. They were very, cl very close to being like an E3 level type. Yes. Uh, Ella, thank you for... Catching it, the full name of his channel is El Crosso Board Game Life. Haba or Yellow, she says, um, there was a fire at the Yellow Booth, right? Because that was where the the little towns had the little fire, oh. which was really cute. Anyway, Green, Game Brewer, oh yeah, because they had the whole, massive, they had, massive they booth. weren't just brewing games, they were brewing beer. Yeah, that's the other unique thing about Essen in general. Like, we, I've been to 23 Gen Cons, and they are very strict on what's allowed in Gen Con, in the halls. <laughs> Your mind uh, was blown. <laughs> yeah, so walking around Spiel, I mean, there are people with like uh, hand saws, power tools, nails on the floor, drinking a beer while they're building Smoking. a set. Smoking. <laughs> while they're building a wooden set in the hall. It was just, and people driving cars 15 miles per hour through the hall. Like, it was crazy. Like, there were literally cars just going by, dropping stuff off. So yeah. it's a very different, more loose atmosphere. Plus, during the convention was really neat. There were guys and, and guys and girls sitting at tables that were obviously friends from different countries drinking beer at a table while they're playing a game. Mm -hmm. It was just it was just very very it was relaxed. Very nice. So anyway. Yeah. So I would say yeah. The there's not a lot of negative things to say other no. than the amount of time it took us to get there. Yeah. We even found out that our there's a game based on our hotel that we stayed in. I oh, know it's crazy. The hotel Arosa. If you guys want to look that up, I don't remember what. It's kind of kind of scary. Of before it got remodeled, I guess it was very creaky. So somebody made a game with like a tower and you drop things into it and you can hear where they, you have to figure out where they fall or something. Yeah. Sounds pretty interesting. But we yeah. loved it. It was a wonderful time. We're happy to be home though. And so we can start playing these games. And uh, yeah, let me talk, uh, take us out with a couple different announcements real quick. Oh, yeah. uh, there's obviously you see some holiday stuff around us. It's time for the holidays. We do a couple different things here. Um, during the holidays. One is going to be the 12 days of Christmas, which is coming up very soon. We've done this for the past two years. This will be our third year. We're going to give a game away every day uh, for five days during the week and then the next five days and then two more. 
going to be from a wide variety of different publishers, but mostly games that we really enjoy this year. Mm -hmm. uh, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be starting very soon. Also, uh, dropping uh, next week is going to be episode 49 of Chit Chat. We've done 49 episodes of that, which is fantastic. However, right after 49 comes 50, and that's going to be a big number for us. I've already reached out to a number of different publishers to give away a huge amount of content and games and stuff to you. So make sure you guys get uh, ready for Chit Chat 50. Hopefully, we're going to be doing it live, uh, which is going to be pretty fun and may... Tech problems may come into play. We'll see. I mean, we got away with 12-hour stream. We yeah. can probably figure out an hour for chit-chat. And the final thing is we are going to be running our Kickstarter in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. We're going to have a bunch of cool little promos. If you guys come out to support us, that would be fantastic. That helps us go a long way for making sure that we can continue to deliver content year after year. So those are three things. you have a fourth? I Well, I have a couple of things. I just want to, like, obviously we're doing a lot more with our MVM Live now, such as this particular stream tonight. We also have uh, Jeremy Howard on Sundays doing solo streams on our Facebook page. We'll be uploading those to YouTube as well up here pretty soon, but they're always going to be live on Facebook. Monday nights we have, what is, what is Ryan calling just it? Just Another Magic Monday. Just Another Magic Monday where he <laughs> plays magic. Uh, like 8 p.m. Eastern, which is pretty cool. And then Wednesdays is still our normal lunchtime stream, noon Eastern. And this week we're going to be playing Amul from Stronghold Games. So be sure to tune in to all of our live things. And I'm sure we'll have even more coming, like Low Memory. Yeah. And maybe even something else very special very yeah. soon. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Again, if you have any questions about uh, what we did here tonight, make them in the comments below and we will answer those for you. And as always, uh, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Discord, and everything else that we do. We will catch you guys next time. See ya.